everything to the best of my ability, on the court and off the court. So when I'm in the car, I up my game with the Drive for Less program from Nodak Insurance. I could save up to 30% on my premium just for driving safely. To me, that's a slam dunk. Download the Nodak Insurance app today. It's Chris Hansen, and for years we have trusted the experts at Rick Electric. Since 1964, Rick Electric has been the go-to for residential, commercial, and industrial. And right now is a great time to consider having a Generac whole home generator installed. If the power goes out, you'll barely notice because of an automatic seamless transition. For work in Fargo, Moorhead, Holly, Horace, Glendon, Dilworth, Kindred, and everywhere in between, it's Rick Electric at rickelectric.com. It's back. Fargo's official St. Patrick's Day pub crawl presented by Bud Light. Grab your friends and your green gear and head downtown March 11th for the official St. Patty's Day pub crawl. Kickoff at 1 p.m. Grab a passport at any of the participating bars and enjoy the St. Patty's Day specials. Get your passport stamped at each location to receive the commemorative St. Patty's Day finisher medal at the Old Broadway. Find all the details on Facebook. Special thanks to the Bridges Apartments. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's the St. Patrick's Day pub crawl presented by Bud Light. Golf Addiction has some great news. They know you're sick of the snow, so get back on the course at Golf Addiction. Grab your group and take advantage of the brand new 2-3-4 deal Sunday through Thursday from 8 to 5. Golf 2 hours, 3 hours, or 4 hours on the newly upgraded simulators at great prices. 2 hours, just 50 bucks. 3 hours, only 75. And 4 hours of golf, just $100. Plus, enjoy a full-service bar and food at Golf Addiction, your indoor virtual golf bar and grill, serving the FM area for over 8 years. Love is in the air. It's a brand new day. Birds are singing duets together. And squirrels are chasing each other across the treetops. Everyone has a twinkle in their eye. Boom, chicka boom. Don't let junk get in the way. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. And you'll be back to your old self again. We've got magic in our fingertips. And that's why everyone starts dancing. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.COM. Stop by Gateway Chevrolet and check out their great selection of in-stock Chevy cars and trucks ready for immediate delivery. Take advantage of invoice pricing on new 2023 Chevrolet Equinox and invoice pricing on new 2023 Chevrolet Silverados only at Gateway Chevrolet. Plus, find out about 2.9% financing on select Chevrolet models. That's right, 2.9% on select Chevrolets and invoice pricing on 2023 Equinox and Silverados at Gateway Chevrolet. Find new roads. Details gatewayfargo.com. KQWB, West Fargo, Fargo Moorhead, and KPFX, HD3 Kindred, Bison 1660. Powered by Gateway Chevrolet, Cadillac, Nissan, and Hyundai in Fargo. And here's what you need to know. According to our report from The Athletic, the Clippers and free agent guard Russell Westbrook have started talks about the guard joining the team. Westbrook, a free agent after agreeing to a buyout with the Jazz after he was traded by the Lakers to Utah. Salt Lake City, the place to be this weekend for All-Star Weekend. And Joe Mazzulla is going to be there, and he's going to be there as the Celtics' full-time head coach. The team today taking the interim tag off of Mazzulla's title, naming him the 19th head coach in Celtics history. Mazzulla took over in September following the suspension of Ime Utoka, who now is no longer with the organization. Knicks forward Julius Randle will replace Portland's Anfordy Simons in Saturday's three-point contest during All-Star Weekend. In the NFL, the Commanders are interviewing Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy for their OC position. Eagles right tackle Lane Johnson underwent adductor surgery today. He'll miss 10 to 12 weeks, according to the NFL Network. I'm Dan Byer. You've got the insiders. How you play today, from this moment on, is how you will be remembered. That's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Bringing you what you need to know and a whole lot more. Topics you care about, guests you know, and the conversations you came to hear. The insiders are presented by Proceed. Need seed? Think Proceed. Now... Here are the insiders. The insiders. The insiders. The insiders. Insiders. The insiders. Andy Rickoff and Bison great Kyle Emanuel. 
dusted off the old Andy Kyle open for the show today. Well done by Micah Bindi back behind the board. Welcome on in. It is the Insiders for you next two hours to our tour of some sports talk. And as the uh, great intro there did say, of course, Andy Rickoff with you, but joined by Kyle Emanuel. And we were doing the math. I think this is our first show together since before the national championship game. It is, yeah. I was. Uh, I did a couple shows with Rob right yep. after Frisco and then uh, a couple last week, and you weren't mm-hmm. here. So uh, it's good to be back. Get be the back game in the back studio together a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we were doing these for every single day for a couple of months there. And so uh, to take basically a two-month stretch off felt a little weird, but uh, great to be in studio with you. Appreciate you coming in. Even got the Bison 1660 quarter zip. Look at you, branding on point. I found it, and I uh, hadn't worn it in a while, and I was like, it's, it's a perfect day. So I don't I, even have a Bison 1660 thing. You've got, got a Bison NDSU. shirt, so you're good. Yeah, we're good with that. Uh, from our good friends there at Learfield with NDSU Athletics, as it's a Bison game day today for both men's basketball on the road in Kansas City and, of course, women's basketball here at home against the uh, Ruse of Kansas City as well. We do have tickets to give away. We'll be giving away plenty of tickets today on the show. You want to go to NDSU Women's Basketball? We've got some tickets for you. We'll give those away as the show goes on today. Let's make sure you're tuned in right here. Your last two chances to go to games at home uh, for NDSU Women's Basketball this season. So you want to see some games of uh, a team that could be finishing in second place in the Summit League this year? Uh, stay tuned right here because we got plenty of tickets to give away throughout the show for today's game and also the game on Saturday against Oral Roberts. Really fun lineup for you. Looking forward to it. Uh, I know my... Uh, my co-host so well, I even did him a solid today because I knew he was going to want to talk about it. And we're having Corey Herlickson on from Oxbow Country Club to talk about the Genesis Open today. A little PGA yeah. Tour talk. Yeah, let's go. A little PGA Tour conversation Look, for the Genesis Open. Football season's over. Yeah. In, in my mind, a lot of people say, okay, now you get, you're ready for baseball. I know March Madness. I still love March Madness. Yep. Don't get me wrong. I love college basketball. But for me now, it's golf season. And you see it in the Genesis Open. It's it's a phenomenal field. If you like golf and you understand players and like their star power, like it's about as good as you can get. Minus obviously the guys from Live that are not there. But as far as people in the PGA Tour, it's about as good as you can get. And it doesn't get any bigger than Eldrick, exactly. Tiger Woods, Tiger back on the prowl for the first time in a little while here at the Genesis Open. He tees off about two o'clock, a little after two o'clock today. Uh, so it won't be during the show, but we can talk about his round of day tomorrow. I know. I'm here. I told you. I think we set the over under at six and a half times. We'd bring up Tiger Woods with you on the show today. Now that yeah. we're having Corey on, it's probably more like ten and a half. There, is this, does this count as one, or is it yeah. every time we say his name from here on out? Okay. I think I'll give you the first one free on that uh, that bet. But uh, Tiger Woods back in competition, and it is a great group he's with: uh, Rory McIlroy and Justin Thomas. That's the thing I like about the non-majors because the majors it's kind of like i don't know exactly how they do the pairings maybe you do i don't actually but i think I it's kind of a random draw a little bit some of it set up but you never feel like like what we want the last couple of years we wanted bryson dechambeau and brooks, and brooks kepka <laughs> yep, and it never did. happened yeah um genesis and- open they're like rory justin thomas <laughs> and tiger there you go watch it well and if you look at all the pairings they're all just studs together like right. a lot of people that you would recognize recognizable names in the in the game of golf that are all together but do you know who the host of this tournament is i know it's in la no but like there's like a personal host do you oh. know who it is no idea michael Micah? jordan <laughs> no no sorry i was i was doing some research Who's on the how, host? They, how they do pairings host of the genesis open individual person who the host it's, is. i'll give you a hint it's very obvious and he's also playing playing in it Yes. Tiger, Tiger Woods? Yes. Oh, Tiger okay. Woods is the host. Oh. Uh, now he well, said he seems like, like a home field advantage. <laughs> he said he like when it came to the setup and like the course setup and everything, he like re- re- removed himself from all that like a couple weeks ago when he decided yeah, to Yeah, but didn't play. remove his best buddy but on the team or I have a feeling committee. if Tiger wants to tee off at noon when it's warmer with his best friend Justin Thomas and Rory, they're going to let Tiger do that. <laughs> yeah. And rightfully so. He should in my opinion, he should get a pick when he wants to tee off every week. Yeah, but, and I'm totally fine with it because if, if you let Tiger pick and it results in Tiger, Justin Thomas, and Rory McIlroy, yes. I'm absolutely okay it's with it. It's a win-win that. for everyone. It's a win for golf. It's a win for the fans. It's a win for them. That, that sounds just fine. By the way, we'll give you a few updates because not only is uh, Tiger Woods in, so is our good buddy Tom Hoagie. Yeah. He's in the Genesis Open. And through eight holes, Tom Hoagie's two under, tied for the lead. Tom on the prowl right now. 
There you go. The is, Tom, is Tom Hoagie tracker uh, up, up and alive for this season. There Love it. Is Rom still up there? When I was watching, obviously that's what I was doing before I came in. He today. is tied with John Rom, who was two under through five. John Rom was birdie birdie and had like a six footer for birdie for three in a row and missed it. So Patrick Cantlay, John Rom, Tom Hoagie, all two under through five. Some guy who a name I don't know how to pronounce. Oh wait, no, I do. Tom Kim, but uh, uh, South Korean is two under through two. Matt Kuchers, two under through three. And then, oh, Peter Malnati, two under through eight. Those are your leaders right now. All at two under. You guys asked about pairings. Well, I can. I learned how they do pairings for the Masters. The Masters are, pre-deter- are pairings determined by a committee. Augusta National Golf Club members meet to decide on pairings for rounds one and two. But the only preset pairing is that the reigning U.S. amateur champ is paired with the last Masters champion. Yes, oh. that one I did know. Yep, U.S. Amateur with the, the previous Masters. So they champion. do get together, and they yep. probably want to piece together some good groups for the Masters, and as they always do. Yeah. And you got so many good golfers to choose from, you, you can kind of divvy them up a little bit. The thing is, for the TV, you know, whatever group has, I think it's ESPN has it early on, then it's CBS, right? Like the TV group doesn't want you just tuning in for that three-hour stretch where Tigers go. They want right. you tuning in all day long, so they're going to spread out the good golfers. It's not going to put all of them in one big group or you know a, a two-group span. They're going to kind of spread them out a little bit. But uh, Genesis Open going on. Tom Hoagie currently tied for the lead. Tom uh, Tiger Woods uh, tees off right after 2 o'clock today. And, of course, Kyle's got it up on the laptop right now watching it. So there you go. You know, another fun fact, I, this was before I actually liked golf, but when I was with the Chargers, we played this course. Oh. And I barely remember like like the intricacies of the course. I don't really, rem- but I I remember the clubhouse. I remember the elevated tee on number one. Um, I remember I played really really bad. Um, <laughs> it was like a I don't want to call it a pro am, but it was like a a, a Chargers player paired yeah. with uh, I don't know season ticket holders or whoever fundraiser it was. thing type of thing. And yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Played this course. Probably shot like a one twenty if I was keeping real score. That was also the only time I've ever played with a caddy. Oh, um, or. I guess you could call it like he, he didn't carry our bags, but like he went ahead, like gave us the line, like here's what you want to hit, here's what you want to avoid. It's like, hey man, it doesn't matter. Clearly bad. It doesn't matter for me. You can tell me to hit it here; it's not gonna go there. Um, Caddy's fault. I blame yeah. him more than you. He was unimpressed with my game that day. I think. <laughs> I'm sure he was. Uh, by the way, nice flex. Played at the course, just so you guys know. Yeah. Kyle Emanuel. I didn't even know I, at the time. I had no idea that they even played a PJ Tour event there. No oh. idea. Yeah, well, I'm just, I mean, obviously there's a bunch of very nice courses around that area. There is. Part of the country. Yeah. Uh, so we will have Corey Hurlicks on at noon. We ask about the Genesis Open, Tiger being back. There's still, like, I feel like it's gone away from the, the, the news cycle, but there's still a few players that have you know defected to the Live Tour. Yeah. Mito Pereira, who is a guy that should have won a major last year PGA and choked it down the yeah. stretch of the PGA Championship. He just went to the Live Tour. Uh, that's kind of in year, I guess, number two for them, technically. What's is it a, a good thing for the PGA? That's not really a story anymore. Like we don't really talk about it much. Is that a good thing? Because I feel like the live is something that wants to be continuously talked about. They want to be in the the front line story headlines. Well, they're, they're making the rounds back, and yeah. if you watch like Tiger's press conference and Scotty Scheffler's yesterday, they, they asked him about it because, and it's coming up in April when the Masters comes around. Live players are permitted to play in the Masters, and you know, obviously, you know, there, you think there might be some drama on the course, but there's the champion dinner that happens the night before Ooh. that there are live players who have won the masters before dustin johnson uh patrick reed uh, probably a couple of bubble watts and phil obviously um they're gonna be there they're gonna all be in this dinner and it's not it it's it's not just that they're live players and their pga tours together it's like there's some like lawsuits going on yeah like i don't even know if they can talk to each other so like there's a lot of drama going on there and they're already asking players about it and this is still you know what two months you know away. what it sounds like good old-fashioned food fight yeah champions dinner food fight at the masters no tradition unlike any other at the probably masters. helps that scotty scheffler was the, the past winner and he's like the nicest guy yeah. on tour and he'll probably just keep it fish very, and chips. very neutral and i guess just, he's not technically british but fish and chips but i mean like his speech because yep. the champion gives a speech it'll just be I'm, I, Pretty simple. Yeah, I can't imagine him trying to provoke. You know what this, that just reminded me of? What's that? Scotty Scheffler winning the Masters when Jeff Colhan said he was going to miss the cut. <laughs> 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 just reminded me of that. It's great. Um, but uh, So we got Corey Hurlickson coming up at noon. Also at 1130 today, you got to have some Vikings conversation. you got to talk a little Vikings. Yeah, so. uh, football se- I said football season's over, but like the, it's never it never over. really is over. Yeah. Now it's all about the draft. Exactly. Right? Free now agency. We, yeah. Combine's coming up into the month. 
So then you got draft season. The head coaching vacancies are all filled up now. Uh, free agent stuff's going to happen. There's quarterback carousel stuff already moving and shaking right now with the former teammate of yours as well and uh, Derek Carr, who's been released by the Raiders. So a whole bunch of stuff happening there. And we'll have Matthew Collar, Purple Insider on. Uh, Brian Flores introduced yesterday. Defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings could bring a big change to the defensive side of the football. That was clearly uh, the weakness for the Vikings last year with the 31st-ranked Vikings defense. See what the changes he has and ask Matthew Collar that stuff coming up at 11.30 today on the program. Also, it is a uh, NDSU basketball game day, so a couple of uh, newsworthy notes and some nuggets, I think, for women's basketball tonight that I've got. Obviously going to be on the call for the women's game tonight here at home against Kansas City, so some nuggets on that game. Also on the men's game as well. Those games, by the way, tonight, women's basketball can be heard right here on Bison 1660. Pre-game starting at 6.30 and then uh, tip-off at 7 o'clock from the Shack. The men's game uh, starts at 6 o'clock with Micah Bindi on Bison Shootaround. Tip-off at 7 o'clock as well for the Bison against the Roos. You can hear that game over on 107.9 The Fox. Men's team did get in just fine yesterday to uh, Kansas City, even though it was the same day as the Chiefs parade yesterday. Oh, yeah. Didn't they run any traffic problems or issues there? Then they got in after the parade. It kind of cleared out for the most part. They flew in at like 5, left like 5 o'clock here. So probably got there, I would think, 7-ish, something like that. Well, you mentioned that because they were just playing highlights they were. On it right behind your head. That's kind of TV. why I saw it on that yeah. TV across oh, yeah. the way. And there you go. How do you feel about that? Because I know a lot of the years with the Chargers – about the Chiefs winning? Yeah, about the Chiefs <laughs> winning a Super I was rooting for the Chiefs because, one, I'm a Vikings fan that can't stand the Eagles. Yeah. And, two, I, I got I some coaches that. on NDSU wins basketball that kind of big Chiefs fan. So, you know, pulling for them, a little, for them a little bit. Um, You know, we talked about this last week with Rob, and I was like, I, I'm not really rooting for any team. I can't say, like, I'm a huge Eagles fan. Um, I definitely I don't like the Chiefs because yep. I had to play again. I played on two teams in the AFC West, and neither of them were the Chiefs. I had to deal with them. Uh, quite a bit and a lot of uh, bad memories there. One good one, the, the last one when we won in, in uh, did, did you go to overtime or no? It was end of regulation. We had a two point conversion to win the game on Thursday night football. So that was great. We won mm-hmm. in Arrowhead, but that was the only time I beat them in four years. So we were one for eight there, or one for seven, one, one and seven, I should say, yep. out of eight tries. Um, I, I'm not mad about it. I think the further away I get from the game, you just kind of appreciate the, the greatness of Mahomes and Reed as, as hard as it is for me to admit that. Like, they're phenomenal. They have a they have a really good owner. They have a really good GM. They have they're really good at quarterback and they're really good at head coach. That's a good formula. Yeah. If you, that's why that's why the narrative was what it was going into this game. It's like you have probably the best roster in the Eagles, but you have you have all the pieces that you need to win on the Chiefs in terms of the the positions I just mentioned. It is seventh round rookie running back who came out of nowhere and had a really good year in Pacheco. They they didn't have the stars at receiver. Obviously, you have Kelsey and you have Mahomes, but after that, everyone's just kind of – they're good players. They weren't, like, all worldly. And the Chiefs still just find a way. And so, like, I can appreciate that even if I wasn't necessarily rooting for them. I heard that 45% of the players on the roster for the Chiefs in that Super Bowl were drafted by the Chiefs. Yeah. They built it right. Like, you say what you want. Obviously, when you got Mahomes, you got Reed, you got a chance. And I think it was dumb. Some people saying they weren't going to win their division. I thought Some people thought they weren't going to win – yeah, even make the playoffs. That was stupid. It was a very minute amount of people that were probably just looking for clicks and attention, but you know, some people were actually thinking that and saying it. And I, I mean, the Chargers were a good team. You know, the Broncos had a lot of attention in the money like offseason, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I trusted Mahomes and, and Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey to get them to where they needed to. And obviously, I think uh, Mahomes said it pretty well at the uh, parade yesterday. Everyone thought it was a rebuilding year for us. Our rebuilding year, we won a, the world championship. Yeah. This must was be the, building this something pretty kinda, good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's felt like the year to get the Chiefs, right? Yeah. Because of all the moves that have happened. I mean, even the Raiders. People were thinking the Raiders are going to be really good. They bring in Devontae Adams, uh, Chandler Jones. Like, they had some good signings. Mm-hmm. The Chargers did as well. Obviously, we know about the Broncos. The Chiefs also played uh, the most ro- – I think they were fourth in the NFL in terms of amount of snaps that rookies played. They played a lot of rookies. Yep. They played, as you mentioned, a lot of guys that they had drafted. Um and they still found a way to win. And I don't know how you can, as long as Mahomes and Reed are there, I just don't know how you can doubt them. At least preseason, when you're just making these projections, you don't really know until the season kicks off. Like you, you got to assume they're just going to be right there at the top of the AFC West because they've hosted five straight AFC Championship games, and now they've won two Super Bowls. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a dynasty. Now I will say, and I've said this for probably a year or so, it, it will eventually, we all love rooting for Patrick Mahomes, not all of us, but a lot of people like, oh, but yeah, the Chiefs seem like a fun team to root for. It's going to turn into the evil empire. 
Eventually, we're going to be yep. tired, sick and tired. We've seen too much of them. Want them gone. Just like Tom Brady turned into this evil guy we hated until he went to Tampa Bay. Then we all kind of liked him because he was on social media more. And I think it's starting with Travis Kelsey. Because Travis Kelsey's narrative of no one believed we'd yeah. be here yelling and screaming, hey, all you guys who thought we sucked, nobody thought we could win anything. You had us finishing last in the NFL. Like, and we won the, the Super Bowl. Look at us now. It's like, okay, dude. Like, no one thought you were going to be that bad. I agree with you. Um, on the same at the same time, remember watching the Last Dance and how like Michael Jordan would just like he would just find these random things to oh, motivate yeah. him. Like, oh, this guy said the like tiniest little yep. minute thing ever, and he would use that. It's like when you get to that level, sometimes you just need that added mm-hmm. motivation. And if if people saying the smallest thing, like, oh, we don't know. The Chiefs will be good, but they might not win the Super Bowl. If that's what it takes to motivate you, okay, find a yeah. way. But, yeah, I'm with you. Like, But maybe, saying they're not going to win the Super Bowl is different than, oh, you right. no one thought we'd win any games. I don't think anyone thought they were going to oh, be okay. terrible. Yeah. yeah, people doubted them. I think the majority of the country, the majority of national media picked the Eagles. Um, but it's like you won the game by three points. Were they really that off? You know, the same thing with the Bengals. And when the season started, a lot of people were on the Bills. But yeah. the Bills were a good team. They, they signed good. Von Miller. Yeah, like, they had some things going for them. That was the same thing that Georgia Bulldogs players were saying after right. they won the championship when they were saying, like, we were the underdogs the whole year. It's like, you guys were favored to win it preseason. Yeah. <laughs> Not like the entire like, Who is brainwashing these people? Yeah. But like you said, just added motivation. Like Athletes Michael Jordan. Weird. Like yeah. that. I think the best story from the last dance was, or one of them, there's a lot of good of them. But George Carl, the coach that was opposite coaching against Michael Jordan, was in the same restaurant, and then he just didn't say anything to right. him. And then he just walked out, and Michael Jordan's like, oh, really? You didn't come and say hi to me? He's like, oh, just motivation. Yeah. Just, just the weirdest way. things. It is kind of stupid. Uh, but, yeah, you find that stuff. But I think on the outside, look at it, and you're like, okay, Travis, like, let's calm down a yeah, little. Down. It's the start. We're going to learn to hate them. Yeah, that's what we do. We love to. Or, or, we love people getting to the top, but we love to knock them off the or top. people were like questioning, like, oh, is Burrow better than Mahomes? Yeah. Like, oh, Mahomes might be the second best quarterback. And like, put some respect that, on his name. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, okay. I, Burrow had okay. Like, yeah. I, I, and I mean, I said it before that game. I said, if the Bengals beat the Chiefs, I think it's going to be a conversation people will have is who's the better quarterback. Because Burrow would have beaten them five straight. Right. At that point, you got to have the, the conversation. It's, it's a fair conversation. Yeah, I don't absolutely. think anyone was like, yeah, Mahomes eh, at this point, yeah, he's an average quarterback, top twenty, maybe. Yeah. Like, no, everyone's like, at worst, he's probably two. Yeah, maybe some people say three, I guess, maybe. maybe, but like, no one was putting him outside the top three. By the way, you can text into the program. Want you to be a part of it today? You can call in at seven zero one four seven six sixteen sixty Epic Companies Hotline. You can text us at that same number seven zero one four seven six sixteen sixty or email into the Rick Electric email inbox studio at bison sixteen sixty dot com. Jake and Fargo has texted in says since we're talking golf, the new Netflix documentary called. Full Swing is a must-watch as it follows players during the tour last season with all the live drama. It says it is identical to Drive to Survive, which is a big F, a Formula One F1 series that was big on Netflix as well. But I said Netflix documentary Full Swing, and I got a thumbs up from Kyle. So you've seen that. I was going to bring that up. Okay. But I didn't, know, I didn't know if we had uh, overextended on our golf talk already <laughs> in, the, in the first second. I have not so, seen that. I didn't so know I didn't it was a thing. It. I watched the first two episodes. I started the third uh, yesterday. Yeah, it's really good. The first one uh, follows Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth and kind of talks about them coming up. I didn't even realize they were like one and two in college. Uh, and then talks about his PGA Championship win, which we were just talking about. Mito Pereira completely ruined it screwed it up and justin thomas from seven back one on the final day and then the second one's interesting because it follows brooks kepka while he's Ooh. still in the pga tour and then it ends with them asking him about live and he just kind of smiles and doesn't really say anything yep. and you know there you go so yeah i've i've enjoyed it so far okay Two episodes in there you go full swing for all of our uh, golf fans out there uh, we will take a break we'll come back I got a couple of NDSU burning NDSU football burning questions. I haven't got a chance to ask Kyle Emanuel because we haven't talked in in a month plus. So uh, some questions on NDSU for Kyle when we come back next year on the Insiders. Your home for the thundering herd. Hey, you got any left-handed football? Bison sixteen sixty. We take great pride in really doing uh, all the research and the work behind the scenes to make sure that our products just work. We have our own staff member that helps pick the hybrids and the varieties that work in our area. It's meant for you, not for somebody 200 miles away. We test our seed locally, Uh, we produce our seed locally, so we get to see our production fields, where they need to be, 
and if they work there. Need seed, think ProSeed. ProSeed.net, great seed at a reasonable price. Shop the largest new vehicle inventory in the area, only at Corwin Auto. Corwin Auto has over 600 new vehicles available, and one of them can be yours. You heard me. Over 600 new cars, trucks, SUVs, and crossovers for you to choose from. With inventory like that, you don't have to settle. Find exactly what you are looking for. Have a trade? Get top dollar when you purchase any new in-stock or incoming unit. What are you waiting for? Head to any Corwin Auto location today, or shop online, CorwinAuto.com. Hey, business owners, you have your banker, you have your insurance guy, but do you have your door guy? Now you do. DabTech Window Services also specializes in commercial door and window repair and replacement. DabTech is proud to be known for their excellent commercial services as on the NDSU campus. Choose the door and window experts that will deliver top-rated products as well as the experienced technicians that do it right the first time. A decade of service with a century of experience. Online at DabTechWindowServices.com. That's DabTechWindowServices.com. Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home proudly supports the Bison and appreciates the commitment each student makes to its success. Whether in the arts or other campus activities, these students are our country's future and deserving of our support. Hanson Runsvold is dedicated to helping families look to the future with hope and remember what we do today shapes our memories for tomorrow. Add the Bison experience and live life to the fullest. Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home, an experienced and caring staff with a distinct attention to detail. Are you ready to take your pet's food to a whole new level? Nutrisource Pet Foods has a new spin on kombucha, and it's for your dog. Now introducing kombucha, the perfect topper for your dog's food. Kombucha is available in three delicious flavors, chicken, turkey, and beef. Your pet will love the bone broth, and the health benefits are great. It supports digestive health, hydration aid, contains postbiotics, and palatability support. All you need to do is pour over food, add water, and serve. Find out more and find a retailer at Nutrisource petfoods.com. It's Chris Hansen and for years we have trusted the experts at Rick Electric. Since 1964, Rick Electric has been the go-to for residential, commercial, and industrial. And right now is a great time to consider having a Generac whole home generator installed. If the power goes out, you'll barely notice because of an automatic seamless transition. For work in Fargo, Moorhead, Holly, Horace, Glendon, Dilworth, Kindred, and everywhere in between, it's Rick Electric at rickelectric.com. The place you go for all your Bison news first. You've got the insiders right here on Bison 1660. Back in on the insiders here inside our Theroton Ethanol Broadcast Center. Theroton Ethanol produces 175 million gallons of ethanol per year and roughly 400 tons of livestock feed. Learned from Rob Hip yesterday, 400 tons is like, like a couple of bulldozers or something like. He had a, whole, a lot of pigs, like 800 pig, pigs and 500. I thought it was like I thought it was like 19,000 pigs. Or Maybe something. it was. It was like thousands of kangaroos. He had all sorts of stats. Went down the rabbit hole on uh, the tons to uh, to kangaroos, pigs, and a whole bunch of other things with us. But he is down in Kansas City, NDSU men's basketball tonight at seven o'clock and. Right now, third in uh, the conference. Got to take this show on the road and get a couple of road wins. Not easy. Sweeney Center is kind of a strange place to play. And obviously, playing at Oral Roberts is going to be tough. But I think this game tonight, Mike, is very important. And you're on Bison Shooter, and I'm sure you'll touch on this. But with ORU being the second game on this road trip and ORU being undefeated and how good they are, it's like you got to get a win tonight. So you're, at the very least, you know you're splitting the road trip. Absolutely. This is, I think, by far the toughest road trip just because of the teams that they are facing. We heard... Um, Yesterday from uh, Joe Esposito. Joe Esposito. No, that was Tuesday. Two that was Tuesday. But just the fact that oh, like, Greg Steeman, yes, Greg Steeman, yeah. Steeman hot takes, right. hot, 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 hot. He was talking about how Kansas City, just their guard play, is just outstanding. Shamari Allen and Raquanis Mitchell are ridiculous. They had great games in Fargo this last time, so slowing those two guys down. But then also you have to focus on this one on Thursday and then get to Saturday after picking up a win tonight. Absolutely. If you want to call into the program, you can, 701-476-1660. Since me and Kyle haven't done a show since before the national championship game, there's been a, there's been some NDSU storylines and headlines. You know, this is kind of the down, sort of down period. I know it's not for the coaches. They're out recruiting all over the place. But, yeah, it's not in the, the headlines as much. But since I haven't done a show with you for a while, there's been some things we've talked about, you guys have talked about as well, that maybe I haven't got a chance to uh, kind of go through with you so I had a couple of NDSU burning questions for you. The first one, 
the, the Bison have made a new defensive coordinator hire. Obviously, David Braun moves on. He's at Northwestern. I think that's amazing for him. You're coaching the Big Ten. That's great. And the, the Bison have named Jason Petrino their next defensive coordinator coming over from Southern Illinois where he was there. He's been at USD. He's been a head coach before at the NAIA ranks as well. And uh, coming here to Fargo, a place where he's a little bit closer to home, which is Montana for him. Uh, what would you like about the hire of Jason Petrino? Yeah, obviously on paper you, you like it, right? I think uh, the, the biggest thing that jumped off the page of me was you look at when he went to Southern Illinois, and I just pulled it up. They were giving up 40 points a game, and they improved to 23 right away. Now, I NDSU is not at that point, obviously, defensively. Um, but they are coming off a year where it was, you know, it didn't stop to run as well as maybe we, we were used to in the past. And there were some things that, you know, you maybe want to clean up a little bit defensively. So right off the bat, you know, he he's, he has a track record of improving defenses, which I think was big, uh, you know, important to Coach Ince. He has the experience of being a defensive coordinator. I think I think one of the most underrated things about being a coordinator on, on either side of the ball is actually calling the plays. And that's something that's – it's probably not easy. Now I've I've obviously never done it, not even at the high school level. But I like it, it's got to be quick decisions. You got to be on it. You got to know exactly what you want. Okay, what what have we seen from the offense, and what, how are we going to adjust to it? What okay, this play call didn't work. What's our what's our counter to that? What are they doing? How are they attacking? I mean, there's a lot of there's a million thoughts that are going through your mind, and now boom, you got to have a play and you got to have it ready because otherwise your players aren't ready. Got to stay I ahead think, of the offensive coordinator. I think just having. The, the play calling experience um, can can be a big help there. So yeah, I'm excited to see what he brings. I'm sure every coordinator is going to have some new wrinkles, which I'm excited to see. Um, I think the Bison defense has, has been the Bison defense um, for the most part with with those little bit of wrinkles throughout a couple different coordinators. So I'm sure for the most part it will look very similar. But I'm excited to see what he brings a little bit different. By the way, you mentioned you've never done it. There were there were fans that wanted Kyle Emanuel, defensive coordinator. <laughs> I saw him. I saw the posts. Trust hey, me. Kyle Emanuel's around. You think he'd be a good defensive coordinator? As someone who cares uh, deeply about this program, I would not have been the best <laughs> choice. You I wouldn't would, have let that happen to you. We might have monitor. been giving up forty points a game. <laughs> we would have been blitzing a lot, though. We would have coming after him. That's Either for sure. Blitzing a lot or blitzing never, or not blitzing at the right time, or yep. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, it's, that wouldn't have been the best. That wouldn't have been the best for NDSU, but I'm flattered. Fair enough. Uh, I'm excited about it, too, because you get a guy that's called plays before. He's been around this this conference a lot, so he knows the teams. Obviously, they've changed throughout the years, but he knows the teams pretty well, especially being at Southern Illinois for the last handful of years. And when you've got a defense, let's, let's face it, there's going to have a lot of new faces on it next year. There's a lot of people that transferred or graduated or moved on. Uh, so you, you're replacing your whole secondary. You know, like yeah. To have a guy that's experienced in calling plays and knows how to do and that coach process. Coach safeties, too. Yeah, coach Southern, safeties. Yeah. like. That's important. I think that's, like, that's an underrated thing we don't talk about, but he's, he's done it before. He's not going to be learning on the job, so, you know, quote, unquote. Not that that wouldn't have worked either. I know Grant Olson's name had been thrown around. Yep. If he had done it, it would have done a fine job. But I do think there's, there's some, something valuable about having someone that has called the plays before. Another question for you, just where do you think NDSU needs to improve? Obviously, losing that national championship game, and we can touch on this later on in the show, too. I know we got Matthew Collar coming up in a bit, but where do you think NDSU needs to improve to get back on top? Yeah, look, I think everyone wants to point to the offensive side of the ball, right? We saw some struggles a little bit there at, at the end of the year um, where, you know, it's like couldn't throw the ball at times. Uh, the running game wasn't quite the same. Uh, you had, you know, what, two or three different injuries along the offensive line. You had tight ends that were injured. You had your best player in Hunter Lipke injured. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm a defensive guy, so I'm going to point to that side of the ball. And what I just said, I think – um, the standard around NDSU is stopping the run and being one of the best in the country at stopping the run and making teams one-dimensional. And I know it, it got better. I, I know the tackling got better throughout the year. But I think you know that front seven, that defensive line, and, and really being difference makers um, throughout a football game for your team, I think that's something that, that they're going to look at and try and try and find a way to just be a little bit more dominant in the running game. And look, by, by all means, it wasn't bad. No. Uh, if you look at the stats, it really wasn't. Um, but, but to the NDSU standard, exactly. it maybe the, the was The NDSU bad. standard yeah. is so high. Um, when you're giving up 100 yards a, a game, pretty much every single game on the ground, I think, you know, again, maybe I'm just biased because I played at NDSU. I played defense, and that was that was always my number one goal as a player. Let, let's stop these guys from running the ball. Because it's, to me, like when, when, a, when a team can't push you around, when a team can't run the ball, it, it's frustrating for that offense. Like, okay, now we have to sit back there. We have to throw the ball. We have to sit in the pocket. Play action is not going to work because they're not going to respect it because they know we can't run on them. It just opens up so much more for you defensively. Um, it allows you to play coverage. It allows your defensive linemen to really pin their ears back and go rush the passer and not have to worry about, you know, okay, i got to read my linemen. Is this runner pass? So I think I'd, I'd point to there right away. 
I would agree with you. I think the defensive line getting more dominant, winning more at the line of scrimmage. I think you've seen teams across the entirety of the FCS, but especially the Valley, copy NDSU and get really, really good on the offensive line. Yep. And they're winning on the lines of scrimmage now. And you just you respond and you, you get – the other thing is you had a lot of young guys on the defensive line. You didn't for have sure. Eli Moster Without for the whole year, right? You had some younger you, players, you lost Heisman, some, yeah, Duton you, Heifer playing. You lost some guys to graduation yeah. and then you lost some more guys to yeah. injury, which didn't help. Again, but as the coaches would tell you, like no one cares. There's yep. no excuses. Like, okay, you lost some guys, you have some young guys, whatever. There is no excuses. You have to go out there and play and find a way to perform. Yeah. So and that – and then I'd also say maybe the linebacker spot figuring out and you were shuffling some linebackers i think there's a lot of guys that can contribute there but i feel like the best defenses for ndsu you had jackson hankey you had nick deluca they weren't coming off the field those right. were your guys your go-to he's, he's gonna stay on there he's gonna get things organized he's gonna get people in the right spot and you're gonna be just fine uh, so i think you need that guy yeah at the and, linebackers yeah and to me it's not even like i don't know if there was a talent issue like i think i think uh kubitz and words were both good very good linebackers that they're good players to me it's more and this is only something that someone inside the locker room could answer but is it you need that leader right and I think that's what those guys were more than anything you think about Jackson Hankey very good football player but he was he was their quarterback out there he was getting everyone lined up like you knew when you had Jackson Hankey on the field when you had Grant Olson on the field when I was playing like things were gonna go well yep. because you had that captain you had that leader out there and, and and I don't know maybe they did have that and maybe it worked out for them but I think having that one voice in the huddle could possibly you know help fix some things i agree with you let's take a break we'll come back matthew caller the purple insider with the latest on the minnesota vikings and what the vikings got to do to get better on defense as well as brian flores was introduced yesterday for the vikings in an introductory press conference matthew caller when we come back on the insiders champions play here this man was a bona fide scrub he can't play no disrespect whatsoever but i'm sorry to call tell everybody the truth he has small hands he can't catch the ball you're home for the thundering herd bison 1660 Rice Companies understands that strong buildings and strong communities start with strong connections. They know the importance of every bolt, every beam, and every handshake. Every connection must be strong. When you work with Rice Companies, you're building on more than concrete and steel. You're building on knowledge and expertise with people you can trust. People who value your investment as much as you do. Connect with Rice Companies, your local butler builder, and experience the difference strong connections can make for your business. Learn more and see career opportunities at ricecompanies.com. There's so many things on the mind of ag operators. This is Scott Zalandic with Cornerstone Bank. Right-sizing your farm operations, interest rates, and inflation are hot-button issues, and for good reason. These concerns require a specialized approach. At Cornerstone Bank, we're here to help businesses, ag operations, and individuals when they're making important decisions about their money. We're a locally owned and managed community bank, and we've been specializing in ag banking for generations. Come see the experts at Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Snow, ice, and below zero temps. Typical Midwest weather, but not so kind to your vehicle. That's why Jiffy Lube of Fargo is here to make sure you have your vehicle in top working condition and ready for these winter roads and temps. Oil changes are the number one maintenance item that's neglected. At Jiffy Lube of Fargo, no appointment needed at any of the three locally owned locations. Jiffy Lube of Fargo, where you can do more in a Jiffy. Jiffy Lube of Fargo, proudly serving the metro area for five decades. Businesses should know the Consolidated Communications has the only data center in the FM area that is SOC 2 certified. That means Consolidated has tested reliable systems in place to protect your valuable data. That's more important than ever with today's security concerns. Many business insurance companies require SOC certification at data storage facilities. You should work with a local data center that is SOC 2 certified. For scalable, cost-effective data center solutions for your changing business needs, go to consolidated.com slash data center. Experience is what builds the future of glass at Cardinal IG in Fargo. Cardinal IG is leading the industry in the development of superior glass for the residential window industry. Their highly motivated and talented employees design and manufacture the best glass in the industry. This February, Cardinal IG would like to say thank you to Michael Johnson, Elisa Hengem, and Elizabeth Victor, who are all celebrating their first year at Cardinal IG. To view open positions or to apply, visit CardinalFargo.com. That's CardinalFargo.com. When it's time to make your next move, turn to Todd Kettermis with Beyond Realty to put the full court press on your home search. Whether you're looking for a quiet home in the suburbs or something downtown... 
Let Todd Cattermas run the point for you in the search for your dream home. Call Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty today or visit him at 4832 Amber Valley Parkway in Fargo. Todd is a proud partner and the preferred realtor of NDSU Athletics. Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty. Moving the herd one home at a time. Gearing up for another season of Bison football? We've got you covered each and every day on The Insiders on Bison 1660. I feel glorious, glorious. Got a chance to start again. I was born. 11.36 on the program. Welcome back in. Thanks for listening. You can watch all of our shows live on our Facebook page. Bison 1660 on Facebook. You can watch all the shows live via the Horsh Cam. Horsh Farming with Passion online at horsch.com, H-O-R-S-C-H.com. Appreciate everybody watching us out there on the Horse Cam there on our Facebook page. And while you're there, well, like the page as well. Follow along and get all the notifications. Plus, uh, we get all the news you need for NDSU Athletics right here on Bison 1660. Also, all the news you need for the Minnesota Vikings. And for that, we go over to the Epic Companies hotline and bring on Matthew Collar of the uh, Purple Insider. He's got all the information you really need for the Vikings, but we have him on, so it's kind of like pseudo. We got all the information you need, but really Matthew has it, and he's just nice enough to share it with us via the Epic Companies hotline. Uh, Matthew, great to have you back on, sir. How is the uh, the early uh, moments of the off season, quote unquote, treating you? Uh, I'm a little bored. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. The, uh, I mean, you know, you get a defensive coordinator search, not exactly the same energy as a GM and head coach search from last year. Yeah. So the, uh, the podcast numbers are not exactly the same as they were at this time from, uh, last off season. Um, but, uh, you know, we're all kind of waiting around asking the same question, right? Which is, is this team going to tear some things down or is this team going to decide that, you know, they're really, really close? last year and all they needed was a defensive coordinator and i think we went into the press conference looking for hints and we prodded for hints and we got no hints so i i don't know what i don't know what direction they're going to go but i mean this is i think it's probably the the widest like range of outcomes for the off season that they could take some big swings to try to kind of go like full rams or something and try to you know build on the 13 win season or they could decide that this has run its course and trade Kirk Cousins like I really I really think that the range of outcomes is that crazy it's kind of funny you mentioned that M- Micah we pulled a, a soundbite from the Brian Flores press conference somebody tried to poke and prod it he's known for pressure he's known for zero blitzes and this was a, a fun soundbite from that press conference yesterday Ryan, you've historically had success with like calling pressure out of zero looks. Can you describe kind of the risk reward proposition of that, and what are some of the keys to doing that successfully? So you want all the secrets right now, like right now? (laughs) Yeah, generally. uh, It took well, it took me some time to get that answer in the interview, so I don't know if you're going to get it right here. There you go. Kind of a funny, funny anecdote from uh, yesterday's press conference. What, what did you take away from the press conference overall? Seems like a fun guy. Uh, he said his family really likes it around here. He want, uh, His family, his kids wanted to come because of Justin Jefferson. So maybe uh, JJ's recruiting uh, coaches via their kids nowadays. But what did you take away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's probably a lot, a lot of the youth uh, who enjoy Justin Jefferson. So that would maybe influence any coach. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I thought that uh, Brian Flores, it's very clear that he has head coaching experience in press conferences because he carefully worked his way around every single question. And a lot of times, you know, it's really like read between the lines is is what we're usually looking for because, you know, I think that the general public thinks that sometimes these press conferences are useless, but I would totally disagree, um, especially in the past having covered Mike Zimmer. But even last year when you started to read between the lines of, Kevin O'Connell's frustration with Ed Donatel, you, you, you could really tell that uh, he wasn't happy with the lack of changes and the lack of adjustment and lack of aggressiveness. And, of course, every defensive coordinator will say they want to be aggressive, but Brian Forrest actually has that on paper in his history that he has been one of the most aggressive blitzing coaches in the NFL. And I think that after a year last year of watching them sit back and let every quarterback do whatever they wanted, Kevin O'Connell decided, no, I'd like a little more pressure on the quarterback that we can create ourselves without having to rely on Darius Smith and Daniel Hunter. So, you know, I think that what we were looking for is just why he wanted Brian Flores, and what we learned is 
that they kind of view the game in a lot of the same ways, and there's synergy there. They're also, and this isn't always a big deal in football, but they're also around the same age, and they also came up with Bill Belichick, too, as, as a major influence to both of them and how they coach. And so I think that they kind of see the, the football world the same way. But what really stuck out to me was actually not something Brian Flores said, but Kevin O'Connell, where he said that he was, he was very reflective after the season about his own performance and looking himself in the mirror and saying, what, what could I have done better? And I think, it, you know, you don't have to read between the lines to know that he was talking about the defensive situation and you know, maybe made a change earlier, but you know, I don't want to go too far with exactly what he meant. But I think that um, like really thinking deeply about the type of person he wanted to be a defensive coordinator, that you need someone you're working hand-in-hand hand with as opposed to kind of I do the offense, you do the defense sort of thing, which did not work very well last year. Uh, Matthew, sticking on the defensive side of the ball, and I, I wanted to ask you about, you know, is this a rebuild? But this kind of this question will kind of answer that as well. Is Flores enough? Uh, uh, the hiring a new defense coordinator is that enough to turn this defense around, or do you say do you think, like in your opinion, do you have to go change some things on the personnel as well, or you're still going to have a defense that struggles next year? Yeah, it is absolutely not enough. No way, not even close. Um, because when you look at uh, the, some of the performances from last year. You can only blame Ed Donatell so far. I mean, the cornerback play was miserable. The linebacker play was miserable. Uh, I think that we're not seeing the same version of Eric Kendricks, even though I think he was misused. It's just not what we saw before when he was an all-pro. Um, I think that you know Harris Smith probably is the one guy you could point to where Ed Donatell just grossly misused him, and he would probably be a lot better under Flores. But you know, they did not have any pressure from the interior. Um, their nickel cornerback allowed more receptions into his coverage than anyone in the NFL. Like they're not a few blitzes away from being a decent uh, defense, and especially when you think about the teams that they played last year and the opposing quarterback schedule, it really was not impressive. Uh, and, but next year they have Joe Burrow, they have Patrick Mahomes, they have Jalen Hurts, they have the 49ers. I mean, it's going to be a murderer's row of quarterbacks that they got to face, and they're probably five or six positions away at being at least good to great from being able to take on those quarterbacks without getting annihilated, blitz or not. Um, so, you know, I think that they have a ton of work to do, and that was something they talked about as a major part of hiring Flores. Now, I would have preferred to know exactly the plan uh, for how they're going to rebuild those positions when you only have, I believe, five draft picks, uh, two top 100 draft picks, and no cap space at the moment. So there is a ton of of work to be done, and I think that's why it is important that Flores and O'Connell see things in the same ways, because they're going to have to kind of rebuild this together and make a lot of tough decisions, because there's a lot of spots to fill, and then even the spots that are filled are by Zedarius Smith, Daniel Hunter, Harrison Smith, Eric Kendricks. These are all older players or players with injury histories and players with huge contracts. That I mean, there's an argument to move on from every single one of them, so they have a ton of work to do, and I just do not believe in the NFL ever that you can win without great players. I mean, Brian Flores, when he got to Miami, his first year they were 32nd in defense. Now, the second year they were 6th because they got a bunch of players who could execute what he was asking for, but it's always going to come down to the roster. I agree with you. I think they need to change over a lot of players there. Uh, before we maybe dive into some of those players, it, it was an interesting route to get to Flores, and you mentioned this isn't the same as a GM and a head coach search, so maybe not quite as many people chiming in for it, but it was an interesting search of how they got to him because Flores was interviewed pretty early in the process, and he was one of the first people they brought in, if not the first one, and they ended up hiring him, but you felt all along they were just waiting and waiting and probably waiting for uh, Ajiro Averro, the former Broncos defensive coordinator who ends up going to Carolina uh, you know, I think Carolina just kind of beat the Vikings to the punch on that one. He signed with them before the Vikings really had a, a massive conversation with them, I believe. Do you, do you think Flores was their first choice in this whole uh, process? Yeah, I mean, if we go by the reports, then uh, Avero was their first choice, and that probably is correct. Uh, but, I mean, I think that if you were laying it out, like, what's the best case scenario, this is pretty close to it, right? Somebody who has uh, this level of experience, and you know whoever you hire, if you're hiring someone good, that their ultimate goal is going to be a head coach. So I think that would be the only like downside to Forrest, is that if he turns around the defense quickly, you're going to lose him quickly, but that's just the reality of 
uh, unless you have a Steve Spagnuolo that's sort of set in Kansas City and wants to stay there D.C. and win Super Bowls, uh, normally every D.C. that you have is a guy that's going to try to get head coaching jobs some other place. So I think that it was a, it was a good outcome, even if it wasn't their first uh, potential outcome. It was with Flores interesting, though, and I, of course, he just you know didn't really answer the question. But uh, when we were asking him about why he came to Minnesota without doing another interview with Arizona or even interviewing with the Denver Broncos, and he talked about it just sort of being a feeling, and you know talking to his wife about how he liked the organization and wanted to be here and that kind of thing. Um, but I'm sure there's more to it, right? Like, is it, you know, did the Vikings lose out on Avero and then say, you know what, uh, uh, can we look under the couch cushions for a few more yeah. dollars that we can give Brian Flores, right? Like, that's, that's probably it. But, I mean, still, you come out with a guy who is more experienced and who has also got a background in scouting, which is how he broke into the league with New England, which I think is really huge for this because, they have misevaluated a lot of young defensive players in recent years, whether it be in the draft or even, you know, it's funny, like the best player they've drafted since 2015 actually plays for the Dallas Cowboys at J. Ron Kurtz, and he could never get on the field with the Vikings. So, like, you know, I think that they really need that element, and that actually might be better to have him here uh, than Avero. I think the the, the rebuild is, is so interesting to me if that's the direction the Vikings decide to go because they were 13-4 and four last year and, and won so, so many games and had some success, some success. But you have those aging superstars like you talked about. If they do decide to go that route, where do they start? And let me throw out a scenario too because someone brought this up to me. Is there any way on earth, and I thought it was crazy, but I'll ask you anyway, they trade Justin Jefferson? <laughs> no, no, no. I thought you were going to say Kirk, uh, because there are ways on earth that that could happen, but there's no way on earth that they're trading Justin Jefferson. Maybe on Saturn. Uh, I don't think on earth, though. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You you would have to be from another planet and not understand how sports work to trade Justin Jefferson. I mean, this is this is a guy who should be on your team for the next 10 to 15 years. I mean, you're just not even, that's not even in the slightest bit of consideration, because eventually someone else will play quarterback for this football team. Uh, because, you know, Kirk Cousins is 35. He's only got one year left on his contract. And whether they're going to move on now or later, they're going to move on someday. And you want the next quarterback who will probably be drafted to have Justin Jefferson. I mean, if Kirk Cousins without Justin Jefferson, let's say if Jefferson had gotten hurt camp last year, what do they win, like six games and Kirk is traded right now? I mean, that's how unbelievably valuable a number one wide receiver is like him. And I think we saw it with A.J. Brown. We saw it in Miami with Tyreek Hill. It's only Mahomes who can do stuff without one, um, just like Brady used to. But everybody else who's human would like to have Justin Jefferson. So, no, that is a 0% chance. <laughs> unless, unless Jefferson told them, under no circumstances will I sign an extension with you, and even then they would not trade him now. Um, they would probably play it out and still try to win in his last uh, year under contract. But I think he'll ultimately sign an extension. But to your question about the rebuild, it, it, there, there's going to be rebuilding. There has to be rebuilding. There's no other choice with their salary cap situation. It's just what shade of rebuilding do you want? The, the 50 shades of rebuilding. It's like, do you want to you know, draft a quarterback right now and, and trade Kurt to somebody who's desperate for a quarterback? Or do you want to just kind of do the competitive rebuild thing and sort of softly get rid of a couple of older players to create cap space? Or do you want to kind of do almost no rebuilding where you just, you know, try to, I don't know, sign a couple more free agents and do everything with, with the cap? So um, I, I think that it's probably somewhere in the middle based on all the recent history from just how this team operates. But if they were to go a little more extreme, not trade Justin Jefferson extreme, but a little more extreme, um, that's probably the direction I think is probably smartest for them. I just got a Justin Jefferson jersey. We can't afford to trade him. I just got the thing. Come on. Hey, I had to ask because a, I won't say the name, but a, a very, very big Vikings fan told me that that might be the best option. So I had to ask. Uh, I had to that, ask. Not, not a Vikings fan anymore if you're saying trade Justin <laughs> Jefferson, in my opinion. Uh, by the way, the, the scenario you brought up, though, Matthew Collier, if you traded Jefferson – uh, or if you didn't have Jefferson this last year, you'd win six games and Kirk was traded. There's probably some Vikings fans who ears 
perked up when you said that. <laughs> Maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. If you get rid of, of Kirk Cousins, I'm, I'm sure there'd be a couple of them that would sign up for that, actually. Uh, just about a minute or two left here, so uh, I appreciate your time with us. Who do you think are maybe one or two players that benefit the most from Brian Flores coming in? Off the top of my head, they say not to do this, give you the answer to the question I just asked, but I, I think two benefit in Harrison Smith and Brian Asamoah, I think, is a sneaky beneficiary as well. Hmm. No, yeah, I agree with both of those. Uh, I also think that for the cornerbacks, the young cornerbacks who presumably will be asked to play next year, it's likely a better fit based on their skill set. So I mean, like, Andrew Booth Jr. and a Caleb Evans, they both have to stay healthy. Um, but even Cam Dantzler, I, I think that all of these guys were drafted kind of be man-to-man corners, and they're going to play a ton of man-to-man in this system. There's no other way around it. If you're sending zero blitzes and things like that all the time, then you have to play a lot of man coverage. But, yeah, I mean, who's going to benefit might be the players that aren't even here yet. Like, the, the players that he handpicks to bring in, um, might might be the biggest beneficiaries to be able to kind of build it in his vision. But I definitely agree that, you know, I, I was intrigued by Asamoah last year and him being kind of a downhill type of player, I, I think that, um, that that would be a great fit. Harrison Smith probably, though, is at the top of the list. But Ed, Ed Donatell should be fined by Roger Goodell for his usage of Harrison Smith last year. Completely agree with you. I'm looking forward to seeing Harrison Smith back in the backfield and, and blitzing a little bit more often than he was this last season. Uh, Matthew Collar, the Purple Insider. You can find him on Twitter at Matthew Collar, C-O-L-L-E-R, on the last name as well. He's the one that gives us all the Vikings information that we just can give to you guys so we can say we know some Viking stuff. Matthew, appreciate the time with us. Uh, we'll catch up with you again when we get closer to the combine and the, the draft as well because we know this offseason just uh, kind of keeps on going on, but appreciate your time today. Yep, sure thing. Anytime, guys. There you go. Matthew Collar, nice enough to stop in and join us via the Epic Companies hotline. We'll take a break. We'll come back, wrap up our number one, and uh, get you ready for our number two, including Corey Herlickson, some Genesis Open golf talk that Kyle Emanuel absolutely loves. That's next. The most complete bison coverage in the region, your Bison Nation station. You are deep in thought, which is always dangerous. Bison 1660. Invest in your community with Epic Companies. Hey, this is Mac. Have you been looking to diversify your portfolio and dive into real estate? We offer multiple types of investing through our mixed-use buildings and entertainment plazas. If you are an accredited investor and interested in hearing more about the investment process and how you can be part of enhancing the quality of life in the area, visit EpicCompaniesND.com to review our investment options. That's EpicCompaniesND.com. Jeremy here at Horsch and Mapleton. Did you know that Horsch manufactures premier planting, seeding, and tillage solutions right here in the FM area. We are proud to be a family-owned business based out of Germany and would love for you to join our team right here in Mapleton. We offer competitive pay, full benefits, and paid family time from Christmas to New Year's. Please visit Horsch.com to view our current openings. Put that tax return to good use this year by paying cash for your next vehicle at Corwin Public Wholesale. Shop over 300 used vehicles at wholesale prices with vehicles starting at just $900. You might even have some cash left over. Cars, trucks, crossovers, and SUVs, they have it all at wholesale prices. Get more for your tax return this year at Corwin Public Wholesale. Corwin Public Wholesale, where your tax dollar goes further this tax season. Located right on the I-29 front of road, Fargo. The story of the nurse and the foot pain that nearly brought him down. I feel like I'm giving people their lives back. Robert lived to take care of his patients, but he couldn't do it unless he took care of his foot pain. I have plantar fasciitis. It'll almost put you on your knees. That's how much it hurts. His own recovery started when he got fitted for arch supports at the Goodfeet store. Now that I'm pain free, I can make these people feel better. Can't beat that. Stop by or schedule your free fitting at goodfeet.com. A story of first downs and second chances. Meet former pro football player Michael Robinson. I wanted to keep playing, but my feet hurt. And all those big league experts couldn't help? You have access to anything, but none of it worked. Finally, he got fitted with Good Feet Arch Supports. Let me tell you something. They work. 
Now, he recommends Good Feet to anybody. If you move, go to the Good Feet store. Sign up for your free fitting at goodfeet.com. Stop by the Good Feet store on 13th Avenue near TJ Maxx Plaza for a free fitting. Call 1 800 New Feet or visit goodfeetdakotas.com. Hey, Bison Nation, Andy Rekoff here, and I just wanted to take a moment to say we absolutely love our Thurlton Ethanol Broadcast Center. Love being there every day to bring you the very latest with NDSU Athletics, but we're not the only ones that like to be in the studio. Michael Tutsi with us here live in studio. Scott Anderson joining us, Director of Multimedia NDSU. The Athletic Director is inside the studio. Matt Larson's joining us. I told you we weren't the only ones. Fuel your future and join the growing team at Thurlton Ethanol today by going online to thurltonethanol.com. Whether it's the FCS, NFL, or productivity at work, we have you covered. That man is playing Galaga. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. It's the Insiders on Bison 1660. Welcome back in to the Insiders. Andrew Reckoff, Kyle Emanuel for today and tomorrow. Nice enough to join us for tomorrow as well. Uh, We had this question for uh, Micah earlier in the week. Young relationship over there. Young Uh love. Uh He had the... uh, you got candles and socks. I got two candles Didn't and I got flowers. some. I got some, a couple pairs of fluffy socks for the cold Valentine's winter. Day? Yeah, how was well, just how was? How was Valentine's Day for you know, the was, Fairly still fairly newly married. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty low key. Uh, she worked all day. I had <laughs> I was busy that night. Um, so we're actually gonna celebrate this weekend. So oh, okay. I, I, we go. haven't really decided what we're gonna do. Obviously, go out for for a nice dinner and and uh, just get away. We don't have kids, so it's like weird. Yeah. It's like we don't really need to go on a date, but like it's still important, you know. So. We're going to celebrate this You get a rose or roses or flowers. Well, I can't give anything away. What if she's listening right now? Okay, that's a good joke. (laughs) (laughs) True. She's at work, so she's probably. (laughs) She could. I've told her. That was my advice to Mike. There's the app. I don't know anything about relationships, but I said you should probably bring a rose. He didn't. He did get some gifts, though, to equal out the the gift he got. I'm married, and I don't know if I know anything about relationships, you know, so. It, It's it's a constant figuring it out, right? Fair enough. So this weekend will be the uh, Valentine's Day a celebration for the Emmanuel household. Yeah, we we okay. talked about doing like a, a a fast food date where you just like go to like four or five and order one thing from like like you know Taco Bell, Chick Fil A, like you just go to a bunch of different fast get food restaurants and get one thing. It's kind of cool. We've talked about that. I know one of her friends does that. We we haven't done it yet and probably won't. Kind we'll of a cool change up, right? Yeah, it'd be something fun. different. To a little do. cheaper too. So. Yeah, something different you could do. Like it. Don't mind it one bit. Uh, we do have Corey Herlickson coming up here in just a couple of minutes, though. Um, one more thing on the uh, the, the Vikings. I, you're not going to trade Justin Jefferson, but Micah's big on trade Adam Thielen or cut Adam Thielen. 33-year-old wide receiver. Yeah, I get that. Does that, that. make sense to yeah, you? Yeah, because he has a huge cap hit, doesn't he? He has like eight, I think he's the second highest on the team. Exactly. So I, I get it. I mean, I, I if you can restructure it and keep him at a lower dollar, would you? If it's a possibly, three-year deal. Possibly. Okay. I think he's probably add some things that we don't even know about in terms of his leadership and just the fact he's a Minnesota kid and yeah. you know his whole story. I think there's there's still some value there. He obviously has dropped off a little bit, but I think he's still a serviceable wide receiver. But at $18 million cap it, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can I could understand them trying to restructure. I think he even said as much. I think he did an interview with like Pat McAfee or someone down in Arizona during mm-hmm. the Super Bowl, and he was like, yeah, it's if I stay, it's not going to be. I get it's it. It's going to get restructured. All yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. How about Delvin Cook? In the age of the uh, the throw the ball offense, air it out. Delvin Cook's like 12, 13 million something this year, maybe even 15. What about Delvin Cook? I am I am of the mindset of you don't pay running backs. And I'm sorry. And yeah. I, and this is coming from even really good ones. who played running back. Love the posi- like I didn't want to be a quarterback growing up. I wanted to be a running back. I wanted to run the football. Like I love the position. Um I just think and I've, I've had this discussion with other people before. I think the, the gap between the best running back and, you know, maybe the 15th or 20th best running back, I don't think it's that big. I think they're, 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 you could make an argument about, like, you know, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook to a certain extent, Saquon Barkley, but it's McCaffrey. like you, McCaffrey, sure. But it's like with that cap, if you're going to pay them the high, if they're going to be the highest paid running back, like, are they a difference maker? Are they the reason you're going to win a Super Bowl? I know Patrick Mahomes is a little bit of an outlier, but we just saw what they did with with Pacheco, and he's and a seventh McKinnon, yeah. and Jarek McKinnon. I mean, so I think you have to be good at running back. You have to be serv- serviceable at running back, obviously. But do you need to pay one? I don't know. I don't, it, it, it's tough, especially when the you know fans love Dalvin Cook. So I, I get it. I, it's I tend to agree with tough. you. I do tend to agree with you. 
Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Hour number two gets going. Back to Kyle's favorite subject. We'll talk golf. Dennis is open. Tiger Woods is back. Tiger, Rory, JT, Live Tour is still a thing as well. Corey Hurlickson, pro at Oxbow Country Club, has that for us when we come back to start off hour number two of The Insiders next. Founded on family values, Dakota Underground is known for providing quality projects at superior timelines. Their 40-year reputation has been built by motivated people who work hard and always do the right thing. They're currently hiring heavy equipment operators, pipe layers, concrete finishers, and truck drivers to join their talented team. Learn on the job, work your way up, and earn a good living for you and your family. Easy apply online at dakotaunderground.net. That's dakotaunderground.net. Other value menus have burritos, maybe even nachos. But only Taco John's valuest menu has the cheese-loving audacity to put nachos inside a burrito. With crunchy tortilla chips, creamy nacho cheese, and zesty sauces, our new Nacho Crunch burritos pack two melty faves into one. Try them with seasoned beef for just $2 or grilled chicken for 3 This might be our cheesiest menu ever. The valuest menu, only at Taco John's. Bigger, bolder, better. Download our app, earn free food. It's another busy weekend on the campus of North Dakota State University. On Thursday, February 16th, the Bison women's basketball team will tip off at 7 p.m. versus the Kansas City Ruse inside the Shield Center. The first 200 students in attendance receive a free NDSU beanie hat. And Saturday, February 18th, they face off against the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles at noon. Be there to cheer on the Bison women in their final two home games of the regular season. Bison Athletics is the hottest ticket in town this winter. For tickets, visit GoBison.com, call 231-NDSU, or buy at the door day of event. Stop by Gateway Chevrolet and check out their great selection of in-stock Chevy cars and trucks ready for immediate delivery. Take advantage of invoice pricing on new 2023 Chevrolet Equinox and invoice pricing on new 2023 Chevrolet Silverados only at Gateway Chevrolet. Plus, find out about 2.9% financing on select Chevrolet models. That's right, 2.9% on select Chevrolets and invoice pricing on 2023 Equinox and Silverados at Gateway Chevrolet. Find new roads. Details GatewayFargo.com. KQWB West Fargo, KPFX HD3 Kindred, and K224FD Fargo. Bison 1660, powered by Gateway Chevrolet, Cadillac, Nissan, and Hyundai in Fargo. And here's what you need to know. According to our report from The Athletic, the Clippers and free agent guard Russell Westbrook have started talks about the guard joining the team. Westbrook, a free agent, after agreeing to a buyout with the Jazz after he was traded by the Lakers to Utah. Salt Lake City, the place to be this weekend for All-Star Weekend. And Joe Mazzullo is going to be there, and he's going to be there as the Celtics' full-time head coach. The team today taking the interim tag off of Mazzullo's title, naming him the 19th head coach in Celtics history. Mazzullo took over in September following the suspension of Ime Udoka, who now is no longer with the organization. Knicks forward Julius Randle will replace Portland's Anfordy Simons in Saturday's three-point contest during All-Star Weekend. In the NFL, the Commanders are interviewing Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy for their OC position. Eagles right tackle Lane Johnson underwent adductor surgery today. He'll miss 10 to 12 weeks, according to the NFL Network. I'm Dan Beyer. You've got the insiders. How you play today, from this moment on, is how you will be remembered. That's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Bringing you what you need to know and a whole lot more. Topics you care about, guests you know, and the conversations you came to hear. The insiders are presented by Proceed. Need seed? Think Proceed. Now... Here are the insiders. The insiders. The insiders. The insiders. Insiders. The insiders. Andy Rickoff and Bison great Kyle Emanuel. Welcome on in. Hour number two of the program for you. We're locked and loaded for a fun final hour here on a Thursday. Bison game day as well with Bison basketball tonight. Both the men and the women in action. Only four games left in the regular season before the best time of the year. March Madness, baby. I love it. Watched some basketball games last night, doing a little uh, research for the old March Madness brackets and everything that come out, all those Don't bracket do challenges. Don't do research. Watching some games. That doesn't help. One thing I've learned is you're right. Yeah, don't This do year specifically, because Alabama, the number one team in the nation, right. lost last night. It's now the ninth time the number one team's been beat, tied for the most in the history of the NCAA since they started keeping track of that stuff back in the 40s. 
tied with yeah, the 1993 season. Well, and even the years when it's not wide open, even those years when there's like two or three teams that are always consistently at the top, two or three, at least two of them are probably going to get upset. And right? the teams like, at the top that have been the number one this year: Houston, Alabama, Purdue. It ain't right. Kansas, Gonzaga, per- Duke, UNC. UNC was a couple of times, but and if I remember correctly, I think Purdue started the season outside of the top 25, yeah. weren't even ranked, yeah. and then they get all the way to number one. So it's like. Yeah, it's going to be all over the map. Yeah, it, and and the, the thing about the, the brackets is you fill one out, even if the t- the top team does what exactly what you think. Well, you know, everyone behind them is probably someone's going to get upset. It's just, this could be the year of an eight, nine, ten seed winning it all. Yeah. It really, it really, honestly Which could, or fun. like a couple of double digit seeds making it to the elite right. eight, final four. Those kind of runs out there. You never know what will happen with March Madness, and you never know what's going to happen any given weekend on the PGA Tour. Got to go out and play four rounds and and try and get a championship on the PGA Tour. And golf season is back, which means. Not only is Kyle Emanuel happy and is he spending hours on the weekends on the couch watching, but also means we get to talk with Corey Herlicks and the pro out at Oxbow Country Club. Who's nice enough to join us via the Epic Companies hotline right now right now, and uh, talk about the Genesis Open that is happening starting up today. Uh, Corey, great to have you back on the program, sir. How's it feel to have uh, PGA Tour events back on the, uh, the weekly calendar here? It's good. It's the time of year where people start getting excited for golf. We expect the snow to melt off here soon and you start getting ramped up and and the tournaments get better and better as we continue down the line here so this one's really to me the big one that starts it all off yeah this one is waste management's always a fun time it's a fun (laughs) tournament Uh, but the genesis seems like the one where it really gets going and of course any tournament tiger woods is at is definitely going to feel like you've really lit the fuse a little bit uh what what excites you obviously about uh, tiger being back and what are your expectations for tiger here in his first tournament of the, the calendar year um, I, you know, just Tiger being back, it, it's just a buzz. It takes every golf tournament and raises it to another level, you know, increases viewership, uh, makes you excited to see how he's going to do. I, you know, I don't know. We, we haven't seen him in a while. So the question is, did that duration of time that he took off allow him to continue his rehab? You know, if you remember the last time he played, he was really limping around as he got to the second day, you know, missed the cut because he, uh, you know, his, this leg wasn't in shape in order to walk around. So we'll cross our fingers and see what we get. He's got a phenomenal pairing playing with JT and Rory. So they threw the power three out there. You know, it's obviously going to be the one that everyone's focused on. So, Corey, uh, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, obviously Tiger Woods is back, and that's going to capture all the headlines. He, As you mentioned, he has not played in a while. Can you just tell us, you know, why it's – I know there's some obvious answers to this, but why is it so hard to come back and win a tournament when all you've been doing is practicing? We know he has a practice facility right outside his house. He plays golf all the time. But there's just something different about tournament golf. Can you describe that for us? Yeah, that's a great question. You can go out and you can play rounds with your buddies. I mean, when I was at TPC Las Vegas, I would go out and play with the tour guys in the winter time when the schedule was set up that the season was done when you hit November. So they'd come back November, December. And I'd play with them, and they would go out, and they'd be playing for money, and we'd join them. And they would stripe the ball down the fairway dead straight 300 yards every time. And you'd play with them, and I just looked at them and said, why do you guys not win tournaments all the time? You guys are hitting the ball dead straight, you're hitting the green tight, and you're making a lot of birdies out there. And they said, how do you play when you play in tournaments? And I'm like, not as well. And I go, guess what? It's the same thing for us. So you can't recreate that. The only way to do it is to do it. And, you know, coming in off of a, a, a... drought we'll call it you know not having tournaments of competition to play in it's really hard to get yourself back in the mindset of competing and feel what it's like to understand your swing and how you can control your swing when the pressure's on when the nerves start it's something that's very hard to create when you're practicing so the only way is to get reps in and it's really hard to do it coming out the gate not having played in any tournaments and Corey Herlick's in here with us. Obviously, Tiger's going to draw a lot of the headlines nationally, and he should. He's Tiger Woods, for crying out loud. And he'll draw a lot of the, the ones here locally as well. But also, Tom Hoagie in this tournament. Update, through nine holes, Tom Hoagie at three under. Actually, now just through ten holes. Just updated at three under, one shot off the lead. I know Tom had a great year last year. It feels like he was picking up some momentum as the year went along. What do you think about the, the prospects for Tom this year as he's going to play in a lot of big tournaments? Well, you know, it, it bodes well for him having such a great finish at the end of the year and finishing where he did on the FedEx Cup points because that's going to allow him to get into, for the most part, almost every single tournament. As long as he keeps his ranking high enough, it's going to potentially keep him in the Masters. Uh, it's going to give him opportunities 
to get into the U.S. Open and British and the PGA. But outside of those four, you know, you're not going to go into those four and play well in every single one. But the rest of the tournaments, he's going to have the ability to play in any tournament that he wants to versus having limited uh, play in. So if he continues to have the success that he's had and have the ability to play in whatever tournaments he wants to, he can pick and choose the events that the golf courses suit his eyes or the format suit his eyes. And uh, that's going to allow him to continue on this role that he's on. And he's always played well at Riviera, if I remember correctly. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a nice finish, a top 20 finish, and continue the success that he started even this year off with winning that event down uh, with a, his teammate uh, that he won and his finishes that he's had recently. Corey, let's stick right there with uh, Riviera, where the Genesis Open is being played uh, this week. I think it opened in like 1924, so a very old course, but yet it still is challenging. What sticks out to you about this course, and you know what do you need to do on this course compared to others uh, to win? Uh, you, Riviera is a classic golf course, uh, one of the more storied golf courses on the West Coast. Uh, it's always been a, a tour stop that the better players have been willing to go and play in, even though the tournament itself might not have the biggest purse. Uh, the one thing that I know from watching this event year over year is the greens are very small, so you've got to be accurate with your irons. If you are not accurate with your irons, you're going to land in the grass, uh, you know, in the rough. And this time of year, uh, you're kind of in a transition. You don't necessarily have Bermuda, probably rye, but they're going to be able to grow that really thick, which makes it difficult to you know get up and down to very very small greens. Um, so to me, that's the biggest thing is you gotta you gotta be really good with your irons this week. And Tom typically is one of the better iron strikers out there. It's just a matter of can he putt on from weekend to weekend. Have you played Riviera? I have not. I wish I had. I, it's a golf course. I love watching the event because it's uh, I think it's a very beautiful course to watch on TV. What Kyle Emanuel isn't telling you is that he he did golf Riviera. He he has so. Oh, I see what he did. Little subtle jab yeah. that I did. But what, on, yeah. I but what he didn't tell you is like at the time I had no idea that I was playing on like a historic course. Yeah. I was just like, oh, we're going to a course in L.A. <laughs> at the time, and now some par back, three or I feel something. Pretty dumb about that. But. Yeah. <laughs> Corey Hurlicks at Oxbow Country Club here joining us. And one storyline that I don't know how much of a storyline it is, but it still feels like it's definitely sitting around there in the ether is. Uh, the the live tour and you've got this other tour and they're back for year number two and I saw Mito Pereira just uh, you know I guess you could still say defected to the the live tour I, I know some players were asked about it in their press conference because those players are going to be allowed to play at the Masters uh, just what do you think of the the live tour here as it's kind of th- this not relationship but this rivalry between the two tours seems to continue on yeah it's going to continue on for a few more more years uh, I really feel. It, it could continue on in perpetuity, but I feel like, you know, uh, it's going to take a good five to six years to really get everything to um, settle down and flesh itself out to really get a grasp of, you know, is the PGA Tour going to continue to be the dominant tour or does Liv have some feet and, and some growth? Um, you're going to continue to see defections. Um, it is certainly something when you're throwing large amounts of money around like that uh, golfers make a decision based on their future. You, the reason why you saw a lot of defections of guys in their 40s last year was because they were guys that couldn't necessarily compete with the younger guys, but they're looking at a huge paycheck, and it gives them an opportunity to play in less events and be home more often. A lot of those guys have been away from their homes for 20 years playing on tour and didn't have a chance to see their kids grow up. So um, it'll be interesting. I'm not a huge fan of Liv. I've yet to watch a single swing. Um, I don't like the format. I don't like the fact that uh, they're looking to get world rankings when they have no cuts and they're playing 54 holes and the fields aren't as strong. But they got the CW, so they have a network that's going to broadcast them. And they've added more tour events. So it'll be interesting to see how this progresses. Yeah, I'm right there with you with the live. It almost feels like a like an all-star game format at times. You know what I mean? It's that's just odd. it's not real golf. Um, but uh, Especially anyway, not four rounds, three rounds. Right, like no cuts, yeah. and it's a team, and Anyway, um, I, I got to bring up Tiger Woods one more time. He, he, he's Tiger Woods. That's and, mentioned five, Micah. <laughs> Mark it out. He, you know, one thing that I love and also sometimes frustrates me about Tiger Woods is his confidence. And he, even last year, you saw him come into the press conferences. He's limping on a leg that he just broke, shattered 15 months earlier. And he's and they ask him the question, do you think you can win this week? And he always is saying, yes, I wouldn't be out here if I didn't think he could. I could win. And he said it once again this week. I almost start to 
not believe him. I appreciate the mindset, and I'm glad he has that mindset, but it's hard for me to believe. So I'll just ask you, do you believe him when he says that he could win this week? I do. I think that uh, the greatest players in the world at whatever level of sport that you're playing have to have that confidence. And if you have to talk yourself into that confidence, you have to do it. But you've got to feel confident that you have an opportunity to win go out there because when you get out there and that pressure starts pushing on you and you don't have that confidence locked in, you're going to start doubting yourself and you're going to break. And in order to maintain the level that Tiger did, he had to build himself up to that. So he has that. And I truly do think he feels like the training that he's putting in and the ability he still has being probably the most talented golfer in in history, he honestly feels that way. So when he says it, I believe it. And if he doesn't believe it and he's just doing it to be, you know, confident out front, well, you know, good for him. Um, It's just good to see him playing. And I wish I had the confidence in my game that he had. Well, now I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now my expectations are to the roof. He's going to win. That, you know, it's, his, his confidence is dimmer than me when I step up to the, the first tee box. That's absolutely for sure. Uh, Corey, <laughs> last question for you, and I appreciate the time here. Uh, short notice. I know I texted you about this this morning. You're very gracious to come on with us. But, who, you know, you know, said Tiger. You know, always dominates, or he used to dominate back in the day. Every single you know event, but it's really difficult to go out every single week and dominate the event week in and week out. But if you were to give us kind of a hot take or a prediction here for this this season on the PGA Tour, who do you think's primed for a, a big year? Someone that maybe is, is is already established, or someone that's not really established. But do you think there's anyone primed for one of those kind of years that's really uh, memorable? I like the momentum that Rory built last year a lot. Yeah. I really think that. He's kind of put his golf game in perspective. Um, I really think that he's reattached himself to the commitment that he needs in order to be the best in the world. So I know it's, I mean, it's hard to pull someone out of the blue that's going to have a great year, but I know that I like the way that he played last year, and I like the way that he talked when he said that he had recommitted himself. So I would say the front runner would be him. I'd like to see Justin Thomas um, or Spieth win a major this year. Um, you know, Speed has an opportunity to finish out his career Grand Slam. I don't know if he has it in him to do it. I'd like to see JT pick up another one. You know, those guys are the forefront of, of the sport of the PGA Tour right now, so it'd be nice to see them continue to battle. But you're right, it, it, you can't go out and dominate the way the Tiger did and have a winning percentage he did. It just doesn't happen, so it's very, very hard. And, um, you know, it's hard to just pick someone out who who could do uh, that. I, I, I think it's Maybe Tom Hoagie. It'd be great to see him. It'd be a great story. That'd yeah, be a phenomenal story if Tom did. And I like the the pick you made of Rory because of one thing. You mentioned his recommitment. I we were just talking about this earlier. You know, Travis Kelsey thought the Chiefs were a terrible team, or he thought people outside of the Chiefs thought they were a terrible team. And even though they didn't, it was that small bit of motivation, that chip on his shoulder that he needed. That athletes need every once in a while. I feel like Rory got that chip back on his shoulder last year. It was something about the live tour. His competitiveness kicked in. You saw a different look in his eyes. Even the things he would say at press conferences just sound a little different, like a guy that's got a chip on his shoulder to prove something, and I like that. So I, I like the pick of Rory McIlroy. That was, that was a good one. I appreciate your time, though, with us, Corey. Thanks for coming on here once again. We'll look forward to catching up with you as these uh, majors get closer and closer and closer. All right. My pleasure, gentlemen. Always enjoy coming on. Of course, Corey Hurlickson, Oxbow Country Club, oxbowcc.com, best uh, golf course in the state of North Dakota. You want to ask me that question? Who do you think's prime for a big season? I was just trying to think about it. Yeah. You know, someone who I would Don't love. Don't say Tiger. Come no, on now. I'm not going to say Tiger. He's only going to play in like six events. Yeah. Uh, someone six who I would though. love to see kind of make their way back, because they almost lost their tour card, Ricky Fowler. I think he, he completely changed his swing, and I think it's it's been better for him. He, he played he well. He didn't go to the live? No, okay. no, he played at the the Phoenix Open. He was there last week. Played well. Had a hole in one. Uh, it was kind mm. of an, in contention, then kind of fell down the stretch a little bit. I would love to see him get back to form. Uh, he started off so well. I also think Max Homa, and that might be a guy that not a lot of people know. Max Homa, I think he already has two wins this year. One win. He, he's he's been playing well, and he's kind of a guy uh, on the up and up. Also, if you like uh, people roasting people on Twitter, he is a great follow. Of uh, all he, he is. does is is make fun of people's swings when they made send fun of himself last week. Makes too. fun of himself and. He's pretty funny. So he's another one that uh, that I could see having a big year. I'll, give it, I'll just throw one out there. One person I'm, I'm kind of cooling on is Victor Hovland. I know. I think same. I'm the opposite of most people on that one, but I, he's out all this hype and just hasn't really yeah. capitalized on it. This could be – maybe this is the year for Colin Morikawa. 
Spooky's gotten a little bit older now. Maybe he knows the game a little bit better. Came on with a flash and kind of cooled off. Yeah, two, two majors, I believe. I believe so. Looking for a big year from Colin Morikawa. Yeah. Maybe I, that's a call. I, I don't I, know. I could see that. He, he kind of... He, he did what a lot of golfers do. He he peaked. He had a, a really good run there, and then you know that's what golf is, right? That's the type of game it is. He kind of fell off a little bit. You probably got a lot of more endorsements. You're doing things off yeah. the course too, which take away from your training and your focus. But now he's been dealing with that for a little while. Probably has a better understanding of it. Maybe. I think that that the easy three, like if you weren't going to go outside, it's it's Scotty Scheffler who just won the Phoenix Open. It's Rory who Corey just mentioned. And it's John Rahm. John Rahm, I think, has finished top 10 in every single event that he's played this year with, like, two wins. Um, I think those three, at least early on in the season, those three have kind of separated themselves a little bit. I think it's a big year for Peter Malnati. Because he's currently leading the Genesis Open. He's at four (laughs) under through 12 holes. Also tied, though, by Matt Kuchar, John Rahm, and now Tom Hokey. Through 11, right. he's at four under. Way to go, Tom. Go. It's a great start, and he had a really good end of last year. Had a solid year overall. He be participating in all the majors now, too. Like This is another big year for Tom. Just establish yourself as a guy that's going to be here for a while. This is going to be a really fun year to follow along and see how uh, Tom Hokey does on a week-in and week-out basis. We'll take a break, then we'll come back. Plenty left to get to here in this hour of the Insiders. I got a few more burning... NDSU football questions I haven't talked about with Kyle Emanuel yet, so we'll go through a few more of those when we come back. Also, your phone calls, texts, and emails all welcome into the show. You can call us up, 701-476-1660, or text us at that same number. You can also email the Rick Electric email inbox, studio at bison1660.com. Bison Nation, your exclusive home for North Dakota State Athletics. Bison 1660. No one does happy hour like Twin Peaks. Whatever your preference, we have everything from tequila cocktails in an extensive bourbon category to top shelf spirits and cocktails served over ice balls. Local craft beers and handcrafted whiskey cocktails round out an adventurous drink menu, second to none. Don't forget about our 29 degree man sized drafts. Are you a fan of Twin Peaks? Sign up for the E Club to stay up to date on all things Twin Peaks and score free stuff. Signing up is easy. Just visit Twin Peaks restaurant.com slash peaks dash club to get started today twin peaks eats drinks scenic views jeff at a cutting edge gallery of jewelry we guarantee you the biggest whitest brightest diamond no matter what your budget it's never meant more than it does today because with the lab grown diamonds at a cutting edge we have partnered up with one of the largest growers in the world we have all shapes in stock so if you come to a cutting edge you get to go through about 2600 mountings to find the perfect mounting for her and we'll match it up with the best stone that your budget can afford come to a Cutting Edge Gallery of Jewelry. So most companies claim they have good people, good product, good customer service, but the question is how often? We go the extra mile to take care of our dealers and our growers, and more importantly, their families and their customers. Proceed tries to bring a family-like experience. Farmers, we want to understand what their challenges are. We also want to bring products to them that help them overcome those challenges so that they can be as successful as possible. Need seed, think Proceed. Proceed.net, great seed at a reasonable price. Holiday's your place to do the do. Yep, because for a limited time, you can mix and match any two 20-ounce Mountain Dews and get a third for free. While the original is delicious, there are so many other Mountain Dew flavors to try. And Holiday has a deal on all of them, like Dew Purple Thunder or the limited edition Pitch Black. So get into Holiday and do a new do. Buy any two 20-ounce Mountain Dews and get a third for free. But hurry, it's only for a limited time and only at Holiday. Since Nodak Insurance Company started, we've gone from paying by mail to paying online. Your proof of insurance in the glove box has changed to a quick tap to our online app. And as new technologies make farming more efficient, our coverage ensures you're always protected. The way we live and work has changed, but our values, service, and commitment have remained the same. Nodak is constantly evolving to meet your insurance needs and deliver answers where and when you need them most. Nodak Insurance Company. Agents with answers. Are you an electrician? Are you looking for a change? JDP Electric is looking for commercial, industrial, and service electricians. JDP is looking for both journeymen and apprentice electricians. You could start your career today with a family-owned and operated business who's been serving our community for over 20 years. Full-time positions available with great pay and benefits. Call 701-232-1991 or email info at jdpelectric.net. Start your new tomorrow today. Come be a part of the JDP difference. 
What do concussions, sports injuries, post-COVID long hauler, and chronic pain all have in common? Inflammation. At Healing with Hyperbarics, we are treating your inflammation the natural way with 100% oxygen, no referral needed, same day appointments, and weekend availability. Now is the time to let us help you heal. Check us out on our website, healingwithhyperbarics.com, or on Facebook. Healing with Hyperbarics is your one-stop shop for total body wellness, conveniently located on 45th Street in Fargo. Hi, it's Sandy from Raybon Sew and Quilt Shop. You know Jennifer and I love stitching all kinds of bags. Handbags, tote bags, organizers. If it's a bag, we like to make it. Join us for a weekend of working on bags at your own pace. For $159, you can join us and make your own bag. Registration includes a six-foot table, lunch, trunk show, instructor assistance, games and prizes, all at the Country Inn and Suites. For more information or to register, stop into the shop or visit us at ray-bond.com. Here for you, for all the Bison football coverage you can handle. These guys do an unbelievable job, and you want to know what's going on in Bison sports, you know, tune in to the Insiders. The Insiders on Bison 1660 and 92.7 FM. A.D. Matt Larson, they're coming back from break. We'll be having the uh, athletic director on again here very shortly. Not tomorrow, Carl. Uh, Sorry, we're not going to get food in. I know you're probably getting excited, but he's a busy man. Busy, busy man. Well, when he does come in, if you, you know, if you, if you need me. Yeah. Oh, I'll give you a call. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Send out the bat signal a little yeah. bit. There you go. Uh, Andy Rickoff, Kyle Emanuel, Micah Bindi in here with you. This hour of The Insider is brought to you by Hanson Runswold Funeral Home. They proudly support the Bison, and Hanson Runswold is dedicated to helping families look to the future with hope. And remember, what you do today shapes your memories for tomorrow. Enjoy the Bison experience and live life to the fullest. Go Bison from Hanson Runswold Funeral Home. Let's go over to the Epic Company's hotline right now. Mark in America giving us a call and apparently wants to give Kyle Emanuel a compliment, too. Mark, how are you doing today? Hey, Andy, I'm doing good. Um, Kyle, uh, very smart play on postponing Valentine's Day. Do you realize how much you're going to save on the roses Oh yeah, oh, today yeah. versus Monday? No, I knew what I was doing there. Yeah, I mean, it also just worked out with our schedules, but yeah, I knew what I was doing. I feel like there's Valentine's Day specials at restaurants and stuff though, that you might be missing out on. Yeah, but they also have limited menus sometimes. Fair. Oh, oh. Exactly. Man. And you, the restaurant, the restaurant, you'll probably save money. Um, oh. Hey, Kyle, I'll... Oh, we're losing you, Mark. Uh, sorry, guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay, I am very jealous that you have played Riviera. That is, uh, that's on a bucket list for me. Um, but I will say, if you have the chance to, to utilize a four caddy, or if it is simply part of your foursome, take advantage of it. Um, I've done it. I've had a four caddy at Scottsdale and down at the Blue Monster, and both of them honestly probably saved me four or five strokes because they know the course, and it's one of those premier courses that you might only play once in your life to check it off. And so they really give you a lot of course knowledge and, and really help you enjoy the course throughout the day. Thanks for the call, Mark. Appreciate you calling on in. Thanks, guys. Yep, of course. Oh, absolutely. I agree with him 100%. The caddy was awesome. Yeah. Like I said, I just... I, Even me, the caddy would probably save me a couple of strokes. Oh, it's, I'd still be terrible. It's insane. They're like, hey, you know, in this hole, you definitely don't want to go here. If you miss here, like, you're going to be short-sighted. Like, you have no chance to get up and down. I mean, like, they, they know the greens. Um it was incredible, but at the time, and not that I'm great at golfing now, but at the time, I really wasn't good. I had clubs that definitely didn't fit me, and it, it just didn't matter. It didn't matter if I had Tiger Woods standing right next to me telling me exactly what to do. It was just it was going to be a bad day, uh, from what I remember. Yeah. You know, this was what five years ago at this point. Um, but yeah, I am, I am, a little bit upset at myself that I didn't like realize how awesome it was I got to play that course because like I said at the time I wasn't really a big golf fan I was still playing in the NFL like that was my focus and yeah I played golf a little bit in the off off season but it wasn't my thing and I got to play a, a really awesome course and didn't even really get to appreciate it so you know, I, was, go back, I was probably just mad that I was playing terribly that day just go back yeah. now you're playing better I should maybe you get a par in a hole so you par in a PGA Tour hole I bet I could get one you could get one I've seen you golf. You could get one. I might even get a birdie. One. If I get mm, one, I don't stretch it. If I get one birdie around, I'm usually. I've seen you drive the uh, green on a par five and not get a birdie. So drive yeah. the green <laughs> oh, on not a par, a par five. Par four. Five? It's a par four. <laughs> it's a, like, a pretty long par four, though. It's like a fishing story where it's like, how big of a fish did you really catch? Par it, five. It was, a, it was it? a par four, and I almost four putted. Yeah, almost. So I, I still got a par though. Yeah, I still got a par, which is pretty good. Better than I could do. I'm way better than I could do. Uh, I still play. You you golf with me? I still play. 
the safe route. I don't really pull the drive route a whole lot. That's right. Yep. You were a, was it? Is it three wood? Three wood. Yeah. Usually That's three right. wood, That's and then right I hit it about the same distance, and it's much more accurate for me. So. I almost guarantee you, if I would play around with, I don't even have a three wood. I have a three hybrid. If I played with just the three hybrid and put the driver in the bag, my score would be probably the exact same, maybe better. But you wouldn't look as cool. But it's like, well, you spent all that money on the drive. Like, I got a new driver last year. Like, I'm not going to not use well, it, yeah. you know? That's the I'm other not, side I'm not of competing. Argument, yes. Obviously. I'm competing against myself, but, like, I'm not really competing. Like, I'm using this thing. Yeah. And if you can get really good with it, then, yeah, obviously it's a huge weapon to have. Exactly. The long drive. Um, a couple of other things to touch on here. We do have some uh, more NFL news to get to, and it has to do with a couple of your former teammates. Okay. One former NFL teammate, and a former, I guess, Bison brother for you uh, that was here at NDSU. First off, we'll go to the NFL ranks. Former teammate Derek Carr. You played, you were a Raider for a little yeah. bit. You probably had some interactions with Derek Carr uh, back yeah. in the day. What are your thoughts on him being released from the uh, LA or LV, Las Vegas Raiders, yeah. and uh, now a free agent? Yeah, look, I'm not going to claim that I got to know him super well. Yeah, I think I was course. there for six weeks, but I did have some interactions with him, and, I, and they were all good. They were all positive. He was, I think, one of the first things he said to me was like, Hey, I'm happy you're here, not you know coming after me anymore. Because obviously we played against each other a, a number of times, and um, I liked him, and I know how much, not even just from getting to know him, but just from the things he said in his career. Like I know how much the Raiders meant to him. I know how much he loved that that organization. He said as much. He said, if I'm not playing here, I might retire, um, and I think he truly meant that. But the way that things ended with them just kind of saying, okay, thanks, but uh, see you later. Um, I know that that desire is still in him. He said it, right? He, he wants to win a Super Bowl. That that's that's his goal, and he's not gonna you know retire just because now the Raiders don't want him anymore. So um, I think he could he could help a lot of teams. I, I I think he's a really good quarterback. He's never had a really good defense. I know there's times Ever. there's been times or you know he, he leaves something to desire a little bit, and people want a little bit more out of him. But like I don't know where you would rank him in terms of quarterbacks, but he's a very good quarterback. And I think there's a lot of teams. I know the Jets come to mind. Um, if they give up on Zach Wilson, I know they come to mind because they have a roster that seems to be built that just needs a quarterback. If, now, we've seen that play out before. I think the Broncos try to do that a million times. They're like, oh, we're just a quarterback away. And other than Peyton Manning, it didn't really work out. Um, but I, I think wherever he lands, I know the Saints are obviously another team that he's been talking to. I also thought it was really smart he refused to trade. It's mm-hmm. like, why would I want to? make the team that I'm going to give up stuff to get me when I can just refuse this trade and sign And give that stuff to the team that's basically kicking me to the right. curb and treating me the way they're treating exactly. me. Exactly. The only the only positive there was then he could keep his contract, I believe, would be the only argument there. It's yeah. like, well, if you get traded, you could keep your same contract. If you go to free He knows he's going to get a good contract he'll, anyways. He'll, he'll, he'll be fine. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see. Where, and he's going to be, it seems like, unless Rodgers somehow gets traded sometime soon, like it seems like he's going to be the first card to fall. He's going to be the first one. It's like, okay, he starts this quarterback carousel. Okay, now Derek Carr's off the board. Okay, well, the team that wanted him, now where do you go? You're going to go to the draft? You're going to go get Jimmy Garoppolo? You're going to go, you know, where are you going to go next? I think the teams you mentioned, the, the Jets make sense. The, I think the Saints make a lot of sense. He's got a relationship with Dennis Allen from his Raiders days. I think the Panthers make a ton of sense. Sure. I, yeah. You got Frank Reich there. Seems like a guy that people love to play for. I know Carson loved to play for for Frank Reich. Things didn't work out in India. I get that, but Frank Reich also kind of was one of the reasons he ended up being in Philadelphia, being drafted there. I think Frank Reich's a really good coach. I uh, got a, a bad deal there in Indianapolis. I love the staff they're putting together, and that division is very winnable without Tom Brady. There, you're going to a winnable division. I think means something. They got a good team around you, some good receivers, and also to be in the NFC. Derek Carr's in the NFC. He's the third best quarterback in the yeah. NFC. Yeah. Jalen Hurts. You could probably say Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr are pretty similar. Yeah, similar. Somewhere. Dak Prescott and Derek Carr are somewhat similar. Aaron Rodgers is uh, Aaron, still again, in the NFC. We don't know about Aaron Rodgers yet. Still in right? the NFC right still now. Still in the NFC right now. I, I'll give you that. Aaron Rodgers he's is better off than a Derek down Carr. Here, though. But Derek Carr, like, you're right. He's never played the great defense. And all the other things he's dealt with, it deal with the team that was moving from Oakland to Las Vegas. There's a lot of drama with that. Uh, you know, everything with the community there. You had the John Gruden saga that ended terribly there with the, the leaked emails he was getting asked about. You had Henry Ruggs, who you know, was a drunk driving accident and killed somebody. He showed great leadership there. He's had to go through a lot of other things and been a great leader through all of it. I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's a good dude, too, and I hope he goes somewhere and has some success. I think Carolina is a sneaky good option for him. Well, and the Raiders, you know, people are forgetting 2016. I won't forget it because I had to play against them. They were really good. I think they finished the year 12-4. and four. That was probably maybe the best defense he played with or close to one of the best defenses he played with. He breaks his leg, I believe, or he had an injury in, like, the 15th game of the year, 16th game of the year. Maybe it was even in the play. Like, 
and he never even got a play in the playoff game. And I think they they exited in the first round, probably obviously in large part because they lost their star quarterback. Yeah. And, you know who who knows what could happen there. They also had you know you mentioned Henry Ruggs. Like, they had a bunch of first round picks that just didn't pan out. Second round picks that didn't pan out. Um, so Still down to, to the playoffs that year. Too. What do you think about the Buccaneers? Like, where do you think they go? Obviously, Brady's gone now. Are they just going to wait and hope Tom Brady comes out of retirement again, or you know, no. are they going to draft someone? Just, is that a spot for Derek Carr? Like, I, I think they draft somebody. I don't think anybody. I don't. I don't think Aaron Rodgers wants to go there. I don't think the Packers would trade him there because it's in the NFC. Yep. Uh, De- I I could see Jimmy Garoppolo maybe. Yeah, makes sense. To I me. think Jimmy Garoppolo goes to the Jets. That's where I think he ends up. Robert Sala and him know each other pretty well. Right. I think that works. They're a team that's – you have the running game built. You have to get receivers to get the ball. You just need someone just to orchestrate that offense. I'm, I'm interested to see what the Jets actually do because Robert Sala has never really been like, yeah, we're done with Zach Wilson, right? Like he's always kind of said, like, yeah, we still want to develop. <laughs> I know. It's like, do you read between the lines? He did say just, we're giving it to Mike White, though. Right, he did. But, like, are they giving up on him in his after a second year? Yeah. It's he's, tough he to was do. A, what, two overall pick? Yeah. Like, do you just give up on him at that point? Or are they going to still – or, you know, are they going to say, we're going to keep you around, but you got to compete for the starting, starting job. It's not yeah. yours. Um, I'm interested. I think they'd obviously take Aaron Rodgers if they could get him, depending on what they'd have to give up to get him. Um, but, you, you know, now you're dealing with a quarterback that's 40 years old, too, or whatever he's yeah. going to be, 39. Um, so I, I'm very interested to see what they end up doing. One other quarterback I wanted to get your thoughts on. Not that you really played with them, but, you know, Bison, brother. Once a Bison, always a Bison. Easton Stick. Yeah. Going to be a uh, – free agent this year free and agent, we've had yeah. easton on i think easton made it clear to us he wants to go to a spot where he feels like he has a chance to get on the field it's difficult though to have a team believe you can be a starter without having you know, played in really any games a sure. significant amount but there's clearly a reason the chargers kept him on the active roster they like him there's clearly a reason they didn't put him on the practice squad because they knew other teams really liked him so he's got a reputation around the league at least a little bit what do you think's a good spot for Easton this next year? Ooh, that's tough. Chase Daniels gone too. He could just be the backup in LA I, with that, the Chargers. I mean, if if if, you, if I had to pick, I think that's might that might be what happens. Now, whether Easton wants to sign back there, that's obviously up to him. This, this is what I said last year. Um, you know, if the if the Chargers don't cut Easton, he's going into his fourth year. Like, okay, well, what is your plan with him? Why are you keeping him around? With there's a very little chance he's even going to be your backup. Um, so why would you keep him? And this is why, like. Like you said, Chase Daniel is a free agent. They're probably going to let him go. I could see a scenario where the Chargers are like, hey, we really like you. We kept you around for a reason. We want to sign you back. You'll be our backup to Justin Herbert. And you're only one um, injury away from getting in. And exactly. That happened a lot last year. And you're around a team and offense that, that you well, – I know they have a new offensive coordinator, but still you're around an organization and a place you're familiar with. So if he values that, he might stay there. Now, I know, like you said, you had an interview with him, and he said, I want to go somewhere where I have a chance to play. Where is that? I don't know. Like you said, he, he hasn't – really played in an actual NFL. I mean, maybe he has a couple appearances, but he hasn't started an, an NFL game. Is there going to be a team out there that says, we're going to go sign this guy or not, dra- not draft a guy, not sign someone else that has starting experience? I don't know. For him, if he's not going to go with the Chargers, you obviously just want to go somewhere where you can compete. Um, probably not going to be handed a starting job, but somewhere where you can compete. Where is that? I don't know. I'd have to run down the list. I mean, some of the, obviously some of the, the places we mentioned that have a quarterback need um, – where else is that? I don't, I don't know. You have to look around the league. I'm sure there's somewhere, though. Obviously, like you said, he's people like him. He, he stayed on the roster for a reason. I just got to find somewhere where he has a chance. Yeah. Think of somewhere like Houston, but they're probably going to draft somebody really early, and then you're right. maybe right the right same back spot the same that you're position. already in. Seattle, maybe, but they kind of like Geno. But they might. Uh, Seattle yeah. might be a good spot if they don't draft someone. You know, yeah, Geno had a really good year, but you probably get to compete at least for the starting job, and if not, probably have a good chance of the backup role. Yeah. So something like that. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Plenty left to get to. A few more segments left here. Andy Rickoff, Kyle Emanuel with you here on the Insiders on a Thursday. As we go to break, almost, Michael, almost, he reminded me, almost went to break. Call right now. We've got a bunch of tickets to give away for NDSU women's basketball. They face Kansas City tonight at, uh, at the Shack. Only two opportunities left to catch NDSU women's basketball. Let's do caller number 5, 701 Wins a family four-pack of tickets to NDSU women's basketball tonight for caller 5 to 701-476-1660. More of the insiders next. Your home for the thundering herd. Bison 1660. Dakota Refrigeration, now known as DRI, has been serving Minnesota, the Dakotas, and Montana for over four decades. Locally owned and operated since 1974, DRI is a full-service source for your refrigeration, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and electrical service needs. From the entryway to the kitchen, from hot to cold, from dreary to bright, DRI has you covered. DRI, formerly Dakota Refrigeration, with 
locations in Fargo, Bismarck, and Minot online at DACREF.com. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is a proud supporter of Bison Basketball. Having the right service team beside you makes all the difference when it comes time to file an insurance claim. Let our experienced independent agents help build a customized insurance plan you can be confident in. Visit FMNE.com to contact a local agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Fall in love with your favorite game this month at Dakota Magic Casino. Get to Dakota Magic Casino Saturday, February 25th. That's when you can win with Cupid's Hot Seats Drawing. One lucky winner will be drawn every half an hour starting at 1 o'clock to 10 p.m. You could win $500 in cash. You just have to be actively playing on any slot machine for your chance to win. February 25th at Dakota Magic Casino. Anthony of the Dakota Nation Gaming Enterprise. Don't let your profits get stuck in your truck this spring. Dirt, rock, let it slide with Super Slide. Super Slide. Slide is a plastic, non-stick, self-lubricating, and seamless liner that eliminates haulback in your dump box or dump trailer. Super Slide is available in various grades, widths, and thicknesses, and Horn Plastics can have you in and out in no time. Get your new liner now to ensure you maximize productivity and profitability in 2023. Super Slide from Horn Plastics, created and preferred for every job. Visit hornplastics.com to schedule your installation. Papa Murphy's 999 Extra Large New York Style Pizza is a big deal. So we're going big to tell everyone about it. How big? We're talking action movie big. Carving 999 XLNY into a mountainside big. And shouting it from the literal mountaintops big. Because the XLNY is everything you can expect from a classic New York style pizza hot and fresh out of your oven for just 999. Order the XLNY pizza at papamurphys.com. Theraldson Ethanol in Castleton is accepting applications for an ENI technician. Applicant must have experience with electrical and instrumentation repairs and maintenance of large machinery and equipment, as well as a willingness to learn procedures for the ethanol industry. Journeyman electrical license or greater is required in addition to three years of experience. Work Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Apply online at theraldsonethanol.com or email your resume to hr at theraldsonethanol.com. Hail the Bison, right here, your home for NDSU sports. This is Bison 1660. Twelve forty-two. The time it's about twelve forty-three. Roads were much better today. Props to the snowplow drivers, North Dakota Department of Transit, and everything. You know, helping clear off the roads. A little icy. There was a lot of people that were stuck for. Hours on the roads yesterday, or well, two days ago into yesterday. I thought I saw say. something on Twitter as people stuck overnight. Yeah, a couple semi drivers between like Moorhead and Fergus Falls. The Minnesota National Guard was called in to help get people off yeah. the roads. Like it was nasty. It was sixty those, mile an hour gusts. One of those storms that just kind of sneaks up on you, and it's not snow. It's just like pure ice because it was in in between freezing, so it gets on the ground and then just freezes quick. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was like not windy at all, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, like I was upstairs in my house doing some work in like our little office area type thing, and like it faces the north, and all of a sudden it's just coming. Like where yeah. did this come from? Like, <laughs> you can here it feel is. it hit the, the windows. Storm has, the storm yep. has arrived. Absolutely. Uh, in here with you for the next uh, you know 15 minutes or so. Thanks for uh, calling in. We gave away some NDSU women's basketball tickets there in that last break. We've got some more to give away. Let's do it again right now. Caller number, let's go caller number six this time to 701-476-1660. Making Micah Bendy earn his keep exactly. back there. This time you're going to win two tickets to today's game against Kansas City and two tickets to the game on Saturday against Oral Roberts for NDSU women's basketball. Caller number six to 701 476 1660 when that uh, four pack of NDSU women's basketball tickets it is a bison basketball game day the men play tonight six o'clock pregame show on 107.9 the fox seven o'clock tip off between NDSU and Kansas City the women play uh, tonight as well 6 30 pregame seven o'clock tip right here on bison 1660 with yours Truly looking forward to this one. Bison women's team, if they went out, it's as simple as this, the way the tiebreakers work and where the standings are right now. NDSU wins out. They're the two seed. I know they had a, they a three-game losing streak, had a really bad weekend last week and on the road, disappointing all around. But they're in a position still, even with those losses, if they win out, they're going to be the two seed, have never been the outright 
second place finisher in the Summit League, a chance to do that and uh, build on this historic season for Bison women's basketball. A couple other uh, burning questions, though, for NDSU football for Kyle Emanuel, because we haven't done a show together in a long, long time. All right. There's obviously a lot of transfers, people that transferred out. Or, or you know, you've also got Destin Talbert, who is just chasing that NFL dream, decided to do that route instead of coming back for one more year. Totally fine. People make their own decisions. They uh, decide what they want to decide and, and, and choose what's best for they for them, at least in their opinions. Um, of those players gone, which ones do you think are the, the biggest losses? Where do you think NDSU is now searching for the most answers? Yeah, I think it's got to be the the, DB, the DBs, right? The, yeah. the, the secondary. You, you graduate two safeties that feel like have been there forever. You you lose Weber Don and Jones. Tutsi. Courtney Eubanks is now gone. Um, it's I, I think you have to point there. I think that was that was a, a position group last year. We said it's really deep, right? Like we felt like you had what three or four corners. Siegel's gone now as well. That was a guy that was probably going to start. I think I think you have to point there. Uh, you know, obviously you, you lose some stuff in the wide receiver room as well. I know there's a lot of young talent there as well that the coaches, coaching staff is, is really excited about. You have a new coach there, so how do they develop? That's obviously going to be, you know, one of the storylines that we talk about probably through spring ball, and, spring ball and up into fall camp. And, you know, so I guess those are probably the two positions I would point to at least. I agree with you with the D-backs room because it, it's literally going to be an entire new secondary. You're going to say running backs? Because, well, it was maybe the offensive one I was thinking about. <laughs> But on the secondary side, I mean, obviously you lose Tutsi and Weber. And then Dom Jones was the guy I said, I'm not really overly worried because Dom is just going to you know, plug and play, right? Right. Well, now he's gone. So that makes it a, a big question mark. I, I really like what I've seen from Sam Young in the little bit of time he's seen in some of those you know blowout games. I think he's going to be a really good player. I'm excited for what he could do at uh, in one of the safety positions. But you got another spot there. You got to figure out something. And even if I like Sam Young, even if the coaches like Sam Young, we haven't seen him. You know, in, in close games yet in his career, making huge plays on the defensive side. He's made some on, on special teams, I believe. And then, you know, cornerbacks, you, you lose everybody. It, it's for, well, they, you know, for a multitude of reasons. Graduation, transfers, whatever. Um, you, you're going to have a whole new secondary. Now, they've done a good job replacing those guys over the years. We thought, you know, when Marcus Williams left, what's going to happen? And then you had other guys step up, and they've been just fine at the secondary spot. But with the way the offenses are in this league, like, South Dakota State's got some good receivers. They can pass the ball. Northern Iowa last year figured out the offense. They started airing that thing out. Theo Day's a good quarterback. Got some good offenses there. Got some good offenses in the F- FCS in general that they're going to see this upcoming year. So, And if you're going to make a playoff run, obviously, which is the goal at NDSU, you're going to have to face some really high-powered offenses. So you need good corners. I think uh, secondary as a whole is a big area. And then I would say running backs a little bit, just because we go from having a completely stacked running back room which was great last year, and it's still really loaded. But, man, you, you lose some pieces. You know, Dominic Canella left earlier on. Now, you know, Kobe's moving on and going for his next opportunity as well. I love Tameric Williams. I think I thought for a while Tameric's a guy that you could lean on heavier and really give him more opportunities. I think there's still some stuff with any different things he does on the playbook that you're, just, you're trying to get him up to speed on a few things. Not really up to speed anymore because he's been around for so long, but – I think Tameric's obviously going to play a huge role there. I'm very excited about that. I'm super excited to get um, you know, more of Barika Panu in there a little yep. bit, the, the West Fargo Cheyenne product. Obviously, TK Marshall is going to be a massive piece this next year, and I love what TK can do. We've seen that in, in spurts as well. But outside of that, you don't have a lot of proven guys. Owen Johnson maybe a little bit. Even the, the fullback room, I mean, you lose Hunter Lipke, and he was a huge part of the running game. And we've got other fullbacks that are good, but what fullback – can run the ball the way that Hunter Lipke did. You don't know. No, no one. Yeah, no, no, no one in the country can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that. So and that's, that's. I'm not even talking about him catching the ball or right. doing other things, but I'm just talking about running the ball the way he did. Yeah, you're not going to find another fullback like that. Uh, at least not for a while. Hopefully, NDSU does. Yeah. We'd all love to see it. Um, but he was a little bit of a unicorn. He just mm-hmm. he was, and there's a reason why he's going to get drafted in the NFL with, with the injuries and everything like that because he was just a, a phenomenal talent that you don't see. Um, very often, even with all the the fullbacks, we've had some really good full. I played with a lot of really good fullbacks, but the versatility that he had just was, it was just different. It, it really was. And and the reason I didn't pick the running back room is because of the three guys you just mentioned. I think you got to feel good about Pino. You got to feel good about Tameric Williams, T.K. Marshall. Most teams, if you're like, oh, we feel good about three running backs, you're, you're like, really good. we're we're fine. Um, you know, we're we're used to in the last couple of years, and you see like five or six. It's not normal for most teams. Um, I think you still got to feel good about those three guys. The other and, thing about the running backs is I feel really, really, really good about the guys in front of them. Right. We'll be blocking. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's that's where it's always going to start, yeah. right? That's, always going to start along the offensive line. 
Yeah, and they're loaded on the offensive line. A couple of texts have come into the uh, the program as well. Daryl in Detroit Lakes, kind of piggybacking on our uh, you know your former teammates who are quarterbacks conversation. Do you think Carson Wentz could get an opportunity in Carolina? Question from Daryl via the text line. Appreciate the question. Yeah, I think he could. And Willie, I don't. I you know. I think Carson's stuff. at the point of his career now, where you know three teams in three years it hasn't gone perfect for him. It just hasn't. If we're being honest, he's probably at the point where he's not going to go to a team and be handed a spot. He's going to have I to agree. compete for it and battle for it. And doesn't mean he can't win a spot. Doesn't mean he can't become a quarterback again and resurrect his career, a la Ryan Tannehill in right. Tennessee. But he's probably going to have to battle for a spot. And he's probably going to go to a place, I would assume, that loses out on Jimmy Garoppolo, Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, doesn't get one of those guys and says, we need somebody. Maybe it's the answer to your question. Maybe it's Tampa Bay. Maybe. Maybe yeah. Tampa Bay says, we need somebody here. We got Mike Evans. You got pieces to throw to. Maybe it's Carson. Who I don't knows? think he's going to have a problem finding a, a spot. Like you said, I think, is he going to be handed a starting spot like he did in Indianapolis, like he did it with, with in Washington? Probably not. Um I think he should be personally. I, I know his talent. I know that, look. There's been some decision making questions. There's been some turnovers and things like that. But like, you go back to Indianapolis and like his numbers were actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, he he had one bad game in the last year, and the owner didn't like him, so they got rid of him. I still think that was a mistake. I still think you give him another year in Indy, um, build around him, not trade things away for Matt Ryan, who was terrible. Um, Things might look different. You still have Frank Reich there. You know, you're not now in this kind of rebuilding stage or whatever you want to call the Colts in at this point. So I think that was a mistake. I think if you're a team that you're like, okay, we don't have our guy at quarterback. We don't really have a high draft pick or someone that we love that we think we can get in the draft. Like, why not bring in Carson and let him compete for the job? And at worst, you're going to have an established backup, a guy that's, you know, probably should have won an MVP in 2017, a guy that got the, his, the Eagles their first Super Bowl, even though I know he didn't play in it. He got them to that point uh, before Nick Foles took over. So, you know, at worst, you know, why wouldn't you bring him in and just let him compete? I think he proved it here at NDSU. He was a phenomenal backup in terms of, like, his attitude, uh, his his approach to the game, him pushing Brock when he was, you know, sitting behind him. So I, I don't think he's going to have a, an issue finding a team. A couple things on Carson that are in his favor. One, every coach in the history of the NFL, both sides of the ball, always believes, I can fix it. Yeah. I can beat the guy. Right. He's not the problem. The other coaches were the problem. I can fix him. So every coach is going to believe. I've seen Carson be an MVP candidate. I've seen him play at that level. He got the Philadelphia Eagles to the number one seed and still played the biggest role on that team and then winning the Super Bowl, in my opinion. So every coach has seen that and knows he has the talent. And then also, he's not a distraction. It's yeah. not like Cam Newton was a couple of years back. Where, right. Oh, you're bringing Cam Newton in. You know, like. Carson's a good guy in the locker room. I know it's been reports other other ways. That was stupid. It's dumb stuff. We all know the kind of guy Carson is. Yep. Good guy to have in the locker room. Great teammate. Good dude. Even when other quarterbacks have started over him, like Taylor Heineke, he like or it was like Sam Howell was the rookie this last year. Carson basically rented out his suite for Sam's entire family. Let him come watch the game. That was a report. Like he's a good teammate. Good dude. Yeah. Not gonna be a distraction in the locker room. And every coach believes I can be the guy that turns him around. So that's yeah. something that's going in his favor. And uh, let's see what happens. Very excited for the future uh, for Carson there in the NFL. I don't think his career is done yet, but obviously he needs a, a good year. He needs to prove something. That's just the way the NFL is. We all know it's a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately type of league. Final break for us. We'll come back, wrap up the show here for you next. A few more texts have come in. People asking Kyle his uh, opinions on a lot of things. So we'll get Kyle's opinion uh, from the text line here in a couple of things when we come back next. North Dakota State football plays here. Bison 1660. Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home proudly supports the Bison and appreciates the commitment each student makes to its success. Whether in the arts or other campus activities, these students are our country's future and deserving of our support. Hanson Runsvold is dedicated to helping families look to the future with hope and remember what we do today shapes our memories for tomorrow. Add the Bison experience and live life to the fullest. Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home. An experienced and caring staff with a distinct attention to detail. Acme Tools continues to grow. Their new Kubota dealership building is under construction in South Fargo, and as Acme grows, so does their team. This family-owned business of over 75 years is now hiring for many positions, including diesel and Kubota techs, electric and lead service techs, warehouse leads, sales associates, and more. Working at Acme is not about punching a clock. It's enjoying each day at a family-owned business that believes in providing great pay and benefits for their employees. Build your career and apply online at acmetools.jobs. 
When it's time to find a realtor, word of mouth is important. And Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty is a name Bison Nation says often. Todd has helped everyone from coaches and administrators to broadcasters and former players and their families buy homes in the FM area. So many in Bison Nation trust Todd to buy and sell their homes, and you can too. Call Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty today or visit him at 4832 Amber Valley Parkway in Fargo. Todd is a proud partner and the preferred realtor of NDSU Athletics. Todd Cattermas with Beyond Realty. Moving the herd one home at a time. It's back. Fargo's official St. Patrick's Day pub crawl presented by Bud Light. Grab your friends and your green gear and head downtown March 11th for the official St. Patty's Day pub crawl. Kickoff at 1 p.m. Grab a passport at any of the participating bars and enjoy the St. Patty's Day specials. Get your passport stamped at each location to receive the commemorative St. Patty's Day finisher medal at the Old Broadway. Find all the details on Facebook. Special thanks to the Bridges Apartments. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's the St. Patrick's Day pub crawl presented by Bud Light. Did you know the average American shops at three stores before buying a mattress? We totally get that. We want the best mattress at the best price. But why only three stores when there are so many out there? When you need a mattress, come to Beds by Design Mattress Factory. We have every type of mattress at one location. Buying from BBD Mattress Factory means you're buying direct and not paying the middleman. Which means our mattresses start at just $99 and you can trade it in for life. When you need a mattress, think the factory. BBD Mattress Factory. You work hard to make your house a home and at Onyx Exteriors, we start to make the outside of your home as warm and inviting as the inside. I'm Blake. And I'm Ray, owners of Onyx Exteriors. We install the industry's top brands in seamless steel, wood, vinyl, specialty products, as well as gutters, windows, and doors. And all at a great price. We personally work with you from the estimate to the installation to guarantee your satisfaction. So whether it's a remodel or new construction, schedule a free estimate online at onyxnd.com. Two hours of sports talk every weekday, 11 to 1. Well, well. Oh, my gracious. Now, let's get back to the insiders. Final segment for you here on the show. Been a lot of fun. Thanks for everybody listening in. Update for you. Tom Hoagie, four under through 13. One shot off the leader, which is Matt Kuchar at the Genesis Open. Round one. Tiger Woods gets going here at 2 o'clock. Hey, and we know what that- Kyle Emanuel's rest of the day looks like. The fact that Matt Kuchar is at the, the top of the leaderboard gives me hope. Matt Kuchar is not a young spring chicken either. No, no, no I'm not exactly not. sure how old he is, but he's got to be close to about the same age as Tiger, if not maybe even a little bit older. And he's at five. If he can do it, Tiger can do it, right? Yeah. I, I always tell I myself. you going to say you could do it. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> come on. Come on. I'm, I'm a little more realistic yeah. than that. Uh, I feel like I always try to temper my expectations when, when Tiger gets into a field, especially with like everything he's gone through. And then he comes out and he says things like, oh, yeah, I can win this thing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 you can. I get all excited. And then he goes out and shoots like two over, and it's like, oh, come on. So, but, so, uh, but then even two over, you're like, you're not out of it yet. So what <laughs> I'm saying is my expectations are high. Yeah. It's, it, I'm, I want him to Sky win. Sky high. I don't, I don't think he'll win. But even if he got like a top 10, top 15, I'd be like, all right, he's back. There you go. That'll be our conversation whole show tomorrow. Yeah. How'd Tiger do? Right. Tor, uh, Tiger, Rory, and JT. Star-studded group. Teen off at 2 o'clock or right thereafter. A few text messages to get to here really quickly. Uncle Roy on the text line, I believe uh, related to him, Bowden Scunberg, just basically saying thank you and I appreciate Micah and Rob for all the coverage of Bison men's basketball, which you can hear tonight on 107.9 The Fox as NDSU takes on Kansas City. Some big games for Dave Richmond and company. Looking forward to seeing how the men can continue this hot streak. They picked up two wins at home. Got to get these wins on the road. And this one tonight's really important because you win this one, you guarantee a one and one road trip. And if you lose it in the next game's against ORU and they have not lost in conference yet this season and look primed to uh, maybe win the Summit League, but obviously we anything can happen in March. You never know what happens in that Summit League tournament. And then uh, somebody else uh, chiming in as well on the text line. Don't have a name to this one, but says, Kyle, you're the coach. How would you approach spring ball? Do you deviate from the past at all, going gladiator style to set up some battles for who really wants those spots, or do you stick to what you've always done? That's a loaded question. I, yeah, you I, got I, a minute. So. I think you got to stick to what you've done in, in certain terms. But, yeah, if you have some position battles, it, look, there's going to be some established guys that you're like, they've taken a lot of hits. We're gonna, we're not, they're not going to add as many reps. But, yeah, if there's some – there's some question marks as pos- at positions. Absolutely. Let them go compete for it. Start it in spring ball and let that carry over to fall camp. There's absolutely positions that are going to be a battle in spring ball. But also, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't right. think it's broke. NDSU football is doing just fine. Tomorrow on the show, 
Back to Kyle's maybe least favorite topic. The NBA. Brad Jones will be on. <laughs> Brad Jones is going to be in studio. And Mike a whole fired lot more it. for us on The Insiders tomorrow. Thanks for chiming in today here on The Insiders. If there's one thing I know about farmers, it's that they are resilient. This is Scott Zalondic with Cornerstone Bank. Farmers are known to rise to ever-changing challenges, whether it be higher land prices and rent costs, risk management, or diversification. Cornerstone Bank offers an experienced team that you can turn to. If you're looking to save, 